It's one of the great views in the Bay Area, San Francisco, from the rim of Memorial Stadium on the Berkeley campus of the University of California. And the hometown California Golden Bears walking into the stadium. And walking, in this case, not always so easy for the Bears. They got as many guys with a hitch in their giddy-up as they do walking along normally. The Cal Bears limping home today to do battle with the visitors from Pullman, the Washington State Cougars. And hello again, everybody. I'm Barry Tompkins. You know my pal and my partner, Petros Papadakis. And uh, Petros, let's talk quarterbacks for just a moment. Both Bill Doba, Jeff Tetford put the ball in the hand of a quarterback who has sometimes gotten it done, sometimes not. Well, Alex Brink is a guy that Bill Doba loves at Washington State. He's smart. He makes all the right checks. He's a guy that they like leading their football team, but he hasn't been great in the second half. Didn't put up any numbers last week after the second half versus UCLA. UCLA came back and beat him in overtime. This guy's got to learn to win with his football team with that offense. Joe Ayub, the Cal quarterback, of course, forced into that duty because Nate Longshore hurt in the first game of the year. This guy can do some spectacular things, and he can go downfield. He He's fast, Barry, but he doesn't execute that short passing offense that Jeff Tedford needs him to do. Only 50% passing on the year. That's not good enough for a Cal offense. And Joe A.U. proving that that jump from the City College of San Francisco program to Division I University of California is a quantum leap. With more on that, let's go down to the field, meet the third member of our broadcast team, Jim Watson. Waddy? Yeah, Barry, last week was an awful day for Joe Ayub. After losing to Oregon State and playing dreadfully, he went through this tunnel and was greeted with a chorus of boos, and it wasn't just from the college kids. The supposedly mature adults were also raining insults on him and telling him how he was choking, showing that sign. He was pretty affected by it so much. In fact, he got up early the next day, drove to his folks' house out in Marin, and put in a highlight tape of himself from junior college, he said, just to pump himself up. He got back. His teammates have rallied around him. They said, hey, man, Aaron Rodgers went through the same thing. And look at how he turned out. He's gotten a ton of emails from the real Cal fans showing signs of support. But maybe the best advice, guys, came from a former college quarterback who told him, look, you wanted to be the quarterback. You have to absorb this criticism and answer back in the only place you can from behind center. That former college quarterback, of course, Jeff Tedford, Fresno State, class of 83. It's a day of redemption for Joe Ayub. It's also a chance to to bounce back for both the Golden Bears and the Cougars. California and Washington State coming up next from Chile, Strawberry Canyon on FSN. Curl takes a snap. Teams it downfield. Buffalo catches it. He catches it. What a spectacular catch. Want a chance to be the Pontiac game correspondent at the national championship game? This has been your Pontiac game-changing performance. Then do what this fan did. Record your best call of a game-changing performance at Pontiac.com slash NCAA. Pontiac, official performance machines of the NCAA. He said it's a chilly evening here at Memorial Stadium in Berkeley. Still the crowd's turning on for the hometown Bears. We talk about the fact that they are limping in. That can be said about both these teams. Will Durning, of course, one of the best linebackers in the Pac-10 Conference. He's unavailable. Bears going without two starting tackles, two starting wideouts, and two starting defensive linemen. We're coming back. 18-inch wheels. Four-panel panoramic roof. 240-horsepower V6 engine. Everything you want in a performance car and can't get on Altima, Accord, or Camry. Now with Pontiac's Total Value Promise, get more without paying more on a new G6 sedan. Pontiac, official performance machines of the Pac-10. FSN Bay Area's presentation of Pac-10 football is brought to you by Pontiac, official performance machines of the NCAA and Pac-10. Washington State and California set to go. Bears will get the ball first. They won the toss and decided we're going on offense. Jeff Tedford quite honestly told us earlier this week, I'm scared. We are so run down. We are so hurt. I wish we had the bye week this week and not next. And Bill Doba too. His team coming off a very tough loss in Pullman against UCLA. Losing in overtime. They had a 21 point lead not once but twice in that game. And Doba says we just have to play four quarters and not the three that we've been playing. That's the story of this game. Lynch and O'Keefe deep for California. So Darius is kicked about two yards deep. Coming out with it this time is O'Keefe and he's going to be stopped short of the 15 yard line. 
Stop by Ian Bell for Washington State, and the Bears will start deep in their own territory. I, I have to think be imperative for California to be able to run the football. Well, that's what they do best, even though they have people hurt on the offensive line, a very strong offensive line coming into the year. Joe Ayub is going to have to hand the ball off if they're going to be successful in this game. Geo Sarah lineups. Marshawn Lynch is uh, playing with a lesser cast than he's had, but you can see Sam Gasol and Jackson with Cunningham also in the ballgame. Two wideouts on first down. The ball right at the 15-yard line. Ayub, the quarterback, play fake on the throw. Little hitch this time for Cunningham. Cunningham turns it upfield, gets it up to about the 33-yard line. Eric Frampton on the reception. Lorraine Cunningham, a guy who was about four deep on the depth chart starting the year. Defensively for Washington State and Christo Bruce coming off a great game against UCLA and Adam Braidwood at the other defensive end spot. Both very quick off the edge and remember Cal playing with backup tackles on both sides offensively. Trent in the middle as replacing Dirty, doing all he can, but boy, he needs help from his friends. And the secondary, as always, active, maybe not quite as quick as the Cougar secondaries have been in the past. First down, Bears at the 27. The first carry of the day for Marshawn Lynch, and he gets about five, maybe six yards. Adam Braidwood, first man to him for the Cougars. A lot of people thought Marshawn Lynch was going to be a Heisman candidate this year, but he's been hampered by that finger like we talked about, Barry. He's had a cast on the wrist before. They've gone with a smaller hand cast. Today, just the fingers taped together. Marshawn Lynch always falls forward when he runs the football, runs very high. He is a fine running back, and the guy behind him, Justin Forsett's pretty good too. Didn't play the second half last week because he left it on the carpet twice in the first half, and that's just a simple no-no to his coach, Jeff Tetford. So his coach's decision, Lynch did not play. A.U. the throw, quick toss this time. Ball is caught by Hawkins. Hawkins has a first down to the 40-yard line. Greg Trent on the tackle. That's exactly what uh, Jeff Tetford told us that he wants. Short passes, if we can get that going, that'll help the running game. And I like what Tedford's doing early. He's getting his running back involved. Everybody's going forward. When he throws the ball, he's throwing it short. These are young receivers that haven't caught a lot of balls this season. They need to be in there. Deshaun Jackson's not playing. Robert Jordan's not playing. These are playmakers for Cal that aren't on the field. These guys are going to have to play four quarters and catch short balls, make something happen. Trips right set on first down, right at the 40-yard line. They started at their own 50. They give this time to Lynch. Lynch trying to get outside and unable to do it. Pick up a yard, maybe two at the most. Scott Davis making sure he did not get to the edge. We've talked about how hurt the Bears are. Just look at this. Nate Longshore, he went down the first game against Sacramento State. Marshawn Lynch hurt his hand, broke his hand, a uh, finger rather, against uh, Washington. Andrew Cameron out for the year with a knee. Deshaun Jackson, he's got a shoulder. So does Robert Jordan. They both will miss this game. Ryan O'Callaghan, he got, uh, got dinged pretty hard. Concussion will not play today. So it's a long, long list. And it started with the quarterback. Longshore went down that changed the season. Second down and eight. Hey, you short drop. Now he has to bail out of there. Looking for somewhere to go, and he's cracked all the way back to the 33-yard line. A big loss. Greg Trent, the middle backer, the freshman, coming on a blitz that time. And Greg Trent had a lot of big-time plays last week. Got beat a couple times against UCLA. Here he is, the middle linebacker. You're going to see him creep out just make the play on it. Ayub. Ayub is very, very fast and really can create when he gets out there in the open. But Trent was right on top of him. Here's a guy that's been making a lot of tackles. He's had trouble in pass coverage like a lot of young freshmen do. The game's just a little fast for him at that point. But he can attack right at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. You saw him do it there. Had a play against Mercedes Lewis last week and uh, Lewis ate him up quite honestly. Loss of seven, third and 15. And a screen this time, and Lynch gets it going in the right direction, but he's going to be short of the first down at about the 47-yard line. That's the block up front by Laurel Cunningham, but not going to be enough for the first down. California will have to give it up. They moved the football, but the sack hurt him. 12-12 remaining here in the first period. Loney will be the punter, and Bumpus will be the deep man, and Bumpus can scoot. Bump City. Bump City, that's right. Loney's kick, high twisting kick, not real long. And a 
fair catch called by Bumpus right at about the 15-yard line, and that's where the Cougars will begin. Let's take a look at how they line up offensively in the Kiyosara lineups, and they will start with Alex Brink at quarterback. He had a brilliant first half last week against UCLA, but tapered off a bit, in fact, more than a bit, in the second half. Jerome Harrison, leading rusher in the Pac-10 Conference, one of the leading rushers in America, and still nobody knows him. Brandon Gibson, the freshman, with Jason Hill is playing 100%, and he is a load for any defensive back. Offensive line, the usual Cougar offensive line. Big, tough, and young. Mean. Mean. Brink going to throw on first down, airs it out. A lot of bumping, and we're going to get a flag. No question about it. It's going to go against Donnie McCleskey, and they had Hill, and Hill was going to go a long way if he caught that ball. You can't say enough about Donnie McCleskey. He's a tough player, an angry safety that hits people and tackles and has led this team for years, but he just can't be out there with Jason Hill. Jason Hill, too fast, too physical, almost 100% from a thigh bruise, and McCleskey just bumps him early. That's an easy call for the officials to make. To make. Jason Hill playing automatic first down. Playing before the home folk. He's uh, from San Francisco, went to Sacred Heart High School here in the city. And that will give the Coons the first down at the 30-yard line. Jason Hill is a terrific offensive weapon. Oh, he really is, and he knows how to stretch the field. This year, 36 catches with a 16.3 average, eight touchdowns. He's pretty good. First down at the 30-yard line. Second offensive snap, and it gives to Harrison, and Harrison picks up about eight yards on first down. Harrison gets to the hole very quickly. Here's California defensively, and this is really a makeshift alignment. Tosh Lupoi is back after missing a couple of ball games with Malele, Kane, and Tafizi. Fultz Bishop and the freshman Felder are the linebackers, so they are whole at the linebacking spots. Hughes, Mixon, McCleskey, and Smith in the secondary. It is a solid secondary, but they need to push up front. Second down to two. Quick toss this time. Flag down. And I think we're going to get a stoppage before things get started here. We'll see what it's all about. I think it's going to be a legal procedure on the Cougs. Full start, number 80 in the offense. Five-yard penalty. Didn't get set. Second down. So that will be for not. That looked like a play that was going to go some. You see, Washington State's a little bit different from Cal the way they're starting out. Their offense is whole, and they have a lot of their weapons back. They took a shot with Jason Hill. Now look for the Bears to get a heavy dose of Jerome Harrison, one of the finer backs in the country. Second down and six. Brink going to go up with time. Now he has to bail out of there, buys himself some more time, throws across his body, and the ball is juggled and dropped. That was going to be a tough catch for Bumpus. Ryan Foltz defending for California. Let's take a Kyocera game break. We go back to the studio. Mike Goldberg, Mike. Oh, Barry, you were talking earlier about putting it on the carpet. How about this one? Number 16, Oregon at Arizona, tied at 21, and Mike Bell fumbles. Brent Haverly returns the fumble 30 yards for the score. It's 28-21, Oregon leading. And in the game most of you were watching earlier, about five minutes left, Oklahoma leads Baylor 27-19. to Barry. All right, thanks very much, Mike. Mike Stoops cannot buy it up. Third down now, the crowd on its feet. Brink straight back, blitz comes, they pick it up. Brink airs it out, he's got a man out here, and the ball is caught this time by Gibson, and Gibson all the way to the end zone. Touchdown, Cougars. No flag. 66 yards, and a perfectly thrown ball by Brink. Beautiful throw, nice route by Gibson. That's a second touchdown of Gibson's career. You saw that blitz come, Barry. Brink is just sitting back there in a rocking chair. Everybody is handled. Nice throw. Beautiful catch, and he's able to leg it into the end zone. Wonderful start for Wazoo, especially getting Brink involved with big plays. Cook's coming out here taking some shots in their first drive. Well, they, there's never been a question about how they've played in the first quarter. In fact, the first half. Their offense has been prolific all year long, and they put six on the board on a 66-yard pass. Brandon Gibson, the freshman from Puyallup, Washington. Right up near Tacoma, Rogers High School, legs at 66 yards, and a perfect pass from Alex Brink with the point. Seven to nothing. Coos. 
by Kyocera. Now there's a whole new reason to smile. People friendly printers and copiers only from Kyocera. And brought to you in part by Fellows, the world's toughest shredders. And by Cooper Tires, proud sponsor of college football. And today's game-changing performance has been brought to you by your local Pontiac dealers. Go in today and check out all the new Pontiac showroom. Pontiac, designed for action. What a big play on the pass from Brink to Gibson and a seven to nothing lead with the conversion for the Cougars who'll give it back to the Bears now. Sidarius kicking this one and this is going to be Marshawn Lynch at about the one yard line. Lynch starts back up the middle, now gets the outside look out 20, 25, 30. And steps out of bounds to the 35 yard line. He does get to the edge of the hurry. Though. And that's why they put him on the return team. They've been having trouble returning kicks, only about a 17-yard average for Cal. They put Lynch back there to create something because he can use his hands now, and he did. 34 yards on that return, and the Bears will start in good field position at the 35-yard line. Abe, three of three on the first drive. 31 yards, but it was the sack that cost the Bears. Forsett is now the running back. Wideouts. Long time this time for Mayu on first down. They give this to Forsett. Forsett bounces it outside. Now he cuts it upfield. And the stop as he crosses the 40 yard line. Picked up about six, maybe seven yards. Eric Frampton on the tackle, a gain of eight. Forsett's a leading rusher for Cal. Kind of came out of nowhere for people. Jeff Tedford says they knew he was going to be great when he stepped on campus a couple years ago. He's averaging eight yards a carry. And Barry, you see how quickly he gets to the line of scrimmage when he gets that ball. This guy has got a live body. Only 180 pounds, but you got to love watching him run. Cal wants to be successful today and calm down this Washington State offense. They got to get Lynch the ball, and then they also got to get Forsett the ball. This time it's Hawkins coming to the near side and to side of the far side. Second down and two. AU give it a four set again, and this time there's nothing doing. He'll be stopped short of the first down by Greg Trent. Trent just filled the hole. This is the second big play we've seen Trent make. Only two series for Cal. This guy's making big stops, becoming more comfortable in that middle linebacker position. Of course, Trent is filling in for Will Durding, and Will Durding is so missed by this Cougar defense and just the entire Cougar team because he's the catalyst. He's the guy that everybody looks to to lead him. Leads by example in the weight room, on the field with his attitude. They miss him bad, but Trent's playing okay so far. Third down, a little more than a yard. And they give it to the fullback, Mandarino, and he's going to get the first down and more right close to midfield. To a two him on the tackle that time for Washington State, but not before Chris Mandarino taking a couple of live bodies with him. Love to see a violent fullback getting a carry early in the game. Mandarino gets a couple touches a game, usually a carry and a catch. You see him get the ball there. Talk about a tough guy, suffered a broken jaw in the spring. They wired it up, and here he is at the bottom. I don't know if I break my jaw doing anything he, if you never see me doing that again. He wanted to go back into the practice. <laughs> Eating out of a straw all that time. There's no way to live. Jeff Tedford loves it. Former walk-off. AU the throw does. Tall for Hawkins, but he makes the catch at the 45. Goes out of bounds the 44-yard line. Scott Davis carries him out for the pickup of six yards on first down, close to seven. That's the second catch in the game for Lavelle Hawkins, but you see on that play, Joe Ayub just doesn't seem comfortable right now running Jeff Tedford's offense. His legs are a little jumpy, gets out there, the ball's a little high. In Jeff Tedford's offense, you've got to drop back in a confident fashion and just deliver those balls right on the chest every time. And the Cougars show blitz off the edge, and they come off the edge, and they give us the four set. Slips by two people and gets it close to a first down. I believe he might have it. Teams and Davis make the stop. It was the right call, considering they were coming off the edge with a blitz. Very dangerous to blitz against Cal, especially when they have the run game going. You see Forsett, not a big guy, but breaking the tackle of Trent getting into the secondary and just short of the first down. Maybe it's your third short. Yeah, good. That's good there. Third down and short. Lynch is the tailback behind Mandarino. 
They give it to Mandarino again, and this time Mandarino is stopped. And I don't know, this is gonna all depend on the spot here. I don't think he got it. I think you're right. And it's dangerous to give the fullback the ball in that situation. Tedford was trying to catch a Washington State defense off guard. Fooled him once on this drive with Mandarino. Now it's fourth and short and they're gonna go for it. The fullbacks don't run the ball enough to know that flow of the line and short yardage and to know how to fall forward. I don't like that call. You give it to Lynch, you give it to Forsett, somebody that knows how to burrow in there. Now they're dealing with fourth and very short. Hey, the quarterback, Lynch the long setback. Two tight ends. And A is gonna take it himself, and he's got it with a second push. It wasn't exactly a thing of beauty, but the Bears will take it. Well, you know, you see the Matt Leinerts of the world and these tall, lanky quarterbacks of the world trying to run quarterback sneaks, and sometimes they look awkward doing it, and sometimes they get stood up and they can't get it. Joe Ayub is an athlete. 6'3", 220, not a small guy either. Sometimes those tall guys get pushed in the end zone by a running back here and there. You never know what's going to happen. But Ayub, he's got the strength in his legs to explode. He runs a good sneak. Ball just across the 40-yard line. Lynch remains the long set. Play fake. Ayub going to go up. This time he airs it out. And well covered is Cunningham. And unable to come down with the ball. That time Ayub threw it into traffic. Frampton was there, and he had a lot of help from his friends. Ayub tossed it into triple coverage there, and it wasn't that nicely thrown of a ball. We talked to Bill Doba, and he knows that Cal is going to take their shots with Ayub and go downfield. But this just an ill-advised play. Strong safety, Eric Frampton there. And the free safety. And the corner. He had another receiver there. Almost looked like a tip drill. You're right. Early in the game for that. It was a duck also. Second and ten. Hey, you a draw play to Lynch this time. He's got room. He's at the 35 to 30. It's gonna, he's going to be gone. It's going to be a touchdown, California. Marshawn Lynch. He just got right outside of Wally Donovan. And then it was all over. 40 yards. There's a reason Marshawn Lynch is back there returning kicks this week for Cal. If this guy gets in open space, he's able to do a lot of damage. Very nicely executed draw, and you see how big that hole is. They misjudge his speed a little bit. He just has to make one cut to the outside, and nobody was going to catch him. When he stands up and runs, I'm not sure there's a faster back in the Pac-10 as far as being physical and fast at the same time. Well, you're right. You saw that safety take an angle on him. He thought he had him at about the three-yard line. It just was a bad angle. This to tie it up, and it is good, and we have a tie ball game. Well, shape it up is a pretty good game so far here. Six minutes, 19 seconds remaining to be played here in the first quarter. And a look at the scoreboard shows the California Golden Bears seven and the Washington State Cougars seven. We're coming back to Memorial Stadium after this. Mandarino, but watch all these bad angles, Barry, taken by the Washington State defenders. There you see the block. Now you're going to see Wally Dada. Terrible angle. Lynch is taking it to the house. Runs right by Hussein Abdullah as well. That is a fast tailback and a physical one as well. Gibson and Woolridge will be the deep men now. Receive this kick of Maloney and a line drive twisty kick. And takes a big hop and that was off the hands of Gibson and out of bounds. So the Bears call a break there. And Coops will start all the way back at the eight yard line. And we go to the field once more. And Jimmy Watson, Waddy. That happened right in front of the Washington State contingent. And they were pretty nervous about it. But Coops going to hold on to the ball. You know, watching Alex Brink, guys, especially on that first drive, it's, it's hard to believe sometimes he's just a sophomore. He's so poised and polished. But, you know, he's been starting since his freshman year. Josh Walker got hurt. So he was forced into the job. He won the job outright this year. And he's a guy that's always been ahead of schedule. His mom said he learned to ride a bike when he was three. He was reading in kindergarten. In high school, he was the starting quarterback on a playoff team when he was 15. That playoff team was Sheldon High School in Eugene. I'll finish the story after the snap. Two-time state champions, Sheldon High School. I just learned to ride a bike last week. <laughs> I still have one. Give to Harrison. Harrison this time, no place to go. Back to Jimmy Watson. Right? 
Yeah, just to finish that story, Alex Brink was the starter at Sheldon High School in Eugene, right across the University of Oregon. In fact, one of his high school teammates was Luke Bellotti, the son of Mike Bellotti. But the strange thing is, even though he ate dinner at their house, he was never recruited by Oregon. In fact, he was never recruited by Washington State. He was going to go to Boise State until Tim Rosenbaugh, the old Cougar quarterback, was hired in Pullman. He went and got his guy, and he's been doing well ever since. In fact, he's a 3.9 GPA. Huge upside, I think, for Alex Brink. Brink out of his own end zone. This is Hill at about the 12-yard line. And he'll get it ahead to about the 16. He's going to be about three yards short of the first down line. Fultz runs him out. You're going to see Hill in motion coming around. And this is a nice play on second down. Get some yardage. Brink doesn't have the greatest arm. He has to really put a lot on that ball just to get it out there to the sideline to his speedy receiver. Maybe a stronger run quarterback gets that ball there quicker, and Hill's got the first down, but a lot of upside with Brink. Doesn't have the, the holes for an arm, the cannon for an arm, but he's smart, and he checks into plays. Most coaches will take that over a rocket arm. Third down and two. Brink going to go up. Rolls out this time. He's under siege. Now he's got to unload it, and he does, and a great grab that time by Cody Boyd, and then he dropped it. That was going to be a spectacular catch if Boyd were able to hang on. And check out all the guys that Cal puts in the box here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine guys in the box. Going to be very difficult on third down to execute anything. And you see they bring about seven of them. Brink a little flustered, but stays under control and puts it on the money to Cody Boyd. He just couldn't make the grab. Tim Mixon going to be the deep man for California. He's returned one for a touchdown this year. Line drive kick, Mixon runs up, might have room here. And he fumbles the football. Now he picks it up, starts back the other way. If he gets the edge, it could be trouble. He's at midfield, the 45, and run out of bounds at about the 42-yard line. Didn't quite get there in time. Devondre Woolridge runs him out of bounds. So the Bears will have it back, and they will have it in Washington State territory. We're tied at seven. Five minutes, 15 seconds remaining to be played in the first quarter. We're coming back. And for the course, uh, the offensive guru, he has a put points on the board everywhere he's been. And look what he's done since he's been here in California. He averaged only 18 points a game in his first year, then jumped to 36, 33, 37 the last two years. Very consistent. He's a guy who you pretty much have to outscore if you're going to beat him. That's what UCLA did. And now we got whistles blowing and uh, going to get a stoppage for a moment. Play clock uh, is still at five, so it's not a delay of game. Dead ball, encroachment on the offense. Number 10, five-yard penalty, first down. Encroachment, a word you only hear in football. They're calling that on Marshawn Lynch. Must be some kind of military term. You know, all the football terms are the same as military terms. That's true. Gridiron. Bomb. We try to stay away from that. Hail Mary. Is that a military term? <laughs> it would be for me. <laughs> yeah, me too. First down and 15 as the Bears are backed up now to the 48-yard line. Hey, you give this one to Lynch, bouncing outside again at the 40, 35, 30, and out of bounds. And with that, we'll take a Kyocera game break, take you right back to our studios and Mike Goldberg. Goldie, what do you got? Well, Barry, the game we took some of you out of, Oklahoma and Baylor, 27-19, Oklahoma. Sean Bell to Dominic Ziegler, 55-yard touchdown, Bears to within two. They go for the two-point conversion, Bell on the keeper. We are tied at 27, about 20 seconds left. We could be headed to overtime. Baylor has never defeated Oklahoma. I tell you, that is an improved program at Baylor, not just a football program. The women's hoopsters won the national championship. Somebody's doing something right down there. Popping off in Waco, Texas, Barry. The place to be. AU going for it all here. It was a little late. The ball is caught, and they're going to say out of bounds. It was Sam Desa on the reception, and maybe AU held that just a little bit too long. But it was a nicely thrown ball, and DeSaw gets over there, just didn't get the foot down. He's coming from that wing position, runs a corner route. 
Boy, it looked to me in. like he did get that foot down. Let's see. This is reviewable. No, no he's out. he did not. Just a toe. If he had a size five. Would have been all right. He would have been okay, but I don't think he would have been able to run out there with a size five. Tom Dempsey would have made that catch. Depends on which way he was running. That's true. Second down at the 30-yard line. And they give us the Lynch again. Lynch gets through the hole, spins, but can't get away from a host of Washington State tacklers. It is down right about the 25-yard line. Still picked up about five, and it'll be third down, a long five. And this is what I like about Marshawn Lynch. Earlier in this series, we saw him just take the edge. He saw the edge and took it. But he's a big physical guy. He's not scared to take it inside. That time he saw the hole inside, was able to cut in and get himself five yards. This is a very seasoned back. And don't be surprised if this guy doesn't have a 2,000-yard season in him before it's all over for him. I think he's a quality back. He has not had the best of it at all this year. Still growing up in every aspect of life. Happy-go-lucky guy, according to his coach. Maybe sometimes a little bit too much. Here's a slant, knocked away and intercepted. Cougars will pick it off. And it was Hussein Abdullah with the interception off the deflection by Eric Frampton. This is just textbook secondary play by the Cougs. First of all, you're going to see Frampton in the slot. There he goes and dives and knocks that ball. And his safety, his secondary mate, Hussein Abdullah, is there. That's the old tip drill that everybody runs in high school. And again, you see a throw off the mark by Joe A.U. That short passing game has not been there for Cal like it used to be. Those throws that are off the mark in the short passing game go up, and they turn into turnover. That's exactly what happened now. Alex Spring trying to make a pay. Got a man out here. That's Hill makes the catch. It's a foot race. Hill at the 40 to the 30. One man Mixon. He can't get him at the 20. Hill reverses field. Still on his feet at the 10 hard line. Still going. Stopped at the five hard line. What a job by Jason Hill. And he does it all to one of the better corners in the Pac-10, Damian Hughes. Ironically, Damian Hughes is the guy that finally ends up catching up to Hill at the end of that play. We were told by Bill Doba that Jason Hill was going to be 100% for this game. I believe him. He takes an inside move on a go route, which you don't often see. Hughes falls down on the play. Give him some credit for getting up and going after Hill. But look at Hill just creating. It looks like a passing league tournament in high school out there. And Hughes eventually gets him out of bounds. 81 yards on that play. Here's Harrison gets it down inside the five-yard line to the four-yard line. Watch Alex Brink on that last play here. Here's where he thinks it's a touchdown. Throws the fist up. Mouthpiece is out. Asking for praise and adulation from his teammates on the sideline. Jogging. Oh, uh, the disappointment of having to stay on the field. I think he'll take the 81. <laughs> we haven't seen too much of Harrison. Cal's been keeping him in check. See if they don't get it to him in the red zone here, at least on the outside, maybe on the wide side of the field. Second out of goal right at the five-yard line. And Brink checking off here. I think Bill Dover said he's a great field general. And the throw, a little wide, intended for Hill. Well covered that time. Damian Hughes, and he had some help. There's a lot of jawing going on between Damian Hughes right now and Jason Hill. You have to say with that 81-yard play, Jason Hill is getting the best of it. But that's the kind of short memory you have to have as a cornerback in the Pac-10. Damian Hughes beat by Jason Hill a couple plays earlier. Defends him well in the end zone on that one. Here comes a blitz and a swing pass for Harrison. Brink had to unload that in a hurry as the blitz was coming right up the gut. So the Bears get after it defensively and will try to keep it to three here. And here's Brink just letting go a little early. When you throw it to a running back, you just have to get it right on his chest. They're not going to reach out and make a catch like a receiver. That was Mickey Pimentel with the pressure on Brink. Cal did a good job getting pressure, forced the field goal. Got to say, that's a victory for the Bears' defense. Absolutely. Lauren Langley will try a 22-yard field goal. And he drives it through, and with that, the Washington State Cougars have regained the lead. They lead it 10-7. to With three minutes and seven seconds remaining to be played here in the first quarter. Next week, 
Cottage football returns when the ninth-ranked UCLA Bruins look to keep pace atop the Pac-10 standings. They take on the upstart Stanford Cardinal, looking to pull off another upset. They beat Arizona State today. Coverage beginning with our kickoff show next Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 o'clock out here on the left coast right here on FSN. Here's the scores from around the Pac-10 today. We talk about Stanford. They had a lead, actually, of 45-14 to 14 late in the ballgame. Arizona State came back with three unanswered touchdowns, but Cardinal wins it. Oregon, and you heard that uh, Mike Goldberg's uh, replay of that one, uh, talking about that game where Mike Bell fumbled and Oregon took it in. Wins by seven over Arizona. Tough loss. And UCLA, a big winner over Oregon State. Bruins are looking more and more every week like the real deal. Well, we saw them come back last week in Pullman. They did it on the road. Then they came back home to the Rose Bowl and put it on the Beavs. I thought the Beavs were going to have a shot to win that game with Matt Moore and Mike Katz. And those guys both had big days. But the Bruins, very strong offensively and improving on defense. Short kick this time. It's going to be Lynch at the five-yard line. Right back up the middle. That's the 10, tries to get the outside. And this time, he's got no place to go. Taken out of bounds at about the 27 yard line by Corey Evans. So the Bears will start at the 27 yard line. Five plays, 81 yards, all 81 of them coming on that pass play from Brink to Hill. Joe Ayoub taking his offense back out on the field. And see, here's the problem with a guy that's having trouble with his accuracy in the short game. There's no way to get his confidence going. His, to get a quarterback's confidence going by throwing the short pass, he's missed a lot of them all year. Goes straight ahead this time to four set. He pops him into the secondary. And picks up about eight to the 35-yard line. They faked the reverse to Cunningham and then gave it off to four set. Tandem of good running backs here in California, much as there is the University of Southern California. Reggie Bush and Lendale White, of course, and you can see what they've done, each averaging over 100 yards a game. We talk about here in Berkeley where uh, Marshawn Lynch, even though he is averaging 99 yards rushing per ball game, has been hurt since the second game of the season. Justin Forsett averaging over 100 yards a game, so the Bears right there as well, and that's with an unhealthy Marshawn Lynch. Playing as healthy tonight as he has been. Here's Forsett again. Bumps off the pack, and now he's got some room at the 40, 45, midfield. Nice block out front by Hawkins, and he takes it all the way to the 31-yard line of the Washington State Cougars. Eric Frampton runs him out. Got a very nice block from Lavelle Hawkins. Probably gave him another 15 yards. Now you're going to see Scotty Davis coming in. He's got the edge, and he's being held there by Craig Stevens. And that enables Forsett to catch the edge. The officials missed it. Davis was held there by the tight end, Craig Stevens, but a very nice piece of running by Forsett. The vision and the patience in the zone play to cut it back after he pushed the front side pretty amply. 34 yards on that pickup by Justin Forsett. And here's a quick toss to Hawkins. And Hawkins trying to get outside. And he'll be close to another first down. A nine-yard gain. Dada runs him out. And that's got to be there all day for Tedford's offense. That little hitch play has got to be there. These are inexperienced receivers. They haven't had a lot of luck going deep down the field in this football game. Ayub is going to have to get the ball short to them, and he's going to have to be accurate doing it. That's been his problem. He has a hard time playing within this offense. And we're going to see this guy take off and run, Barry. He is amazing when he does that, but that's just not what Cal does with their quarterback. They like to drop back three steps and get those wide receivers involved, and then they run the ball, they should be fine. Second down, less than a yard. So kind of a free play here for the Bears. Ayub straight back on a throw. Looks for it all. Got Gray in the end zone. Touchdown! David Gray, who has moved from wide out to tight end, lined up in the slot that time. And that was a perfect throw by A.U., but an even better catch by Gray. Little bit of a mismatch. Gray and Hussein Abdullah, the safety, with Dildine, the linebacker, backing him up, just runs to the corner. Just when I say the Cal receivers aren't getting downfield, they get a nice play from A.U. and Gray, touchdown Cal. And the try for point now to make this a four-point ball game. 
is on its way. It is good. It is a 14 to 10 California lead. Still a minute and 57 seconds remaining to be played in the first quarter. Two yard touchdown pass from AU to Gray. And a driving kick this time by Loney. There'll be no return. Take a look at that last touchdown. They brought Gray into the ball game just for that play. Well, here's Gray. Here's Dildine who's supposed to be on him. Here's his safety, Abdullah, that's going to supposed to help him out. And here is the route you're going to see Gray run. Just a very simple corner route. And Dildine doesn't do much to stop him up. Tries to get a hand on him. Actually pushes him into the corner. And you see Abdullah very late coming over. Not very good play in the secondary and from the linebackers from Washington State. But at the same time, a nice throw. Pretty good route by A. Uben Gray. And you have the idea they're going to have to get Harrison started here. Yeah, only three rushes for 10 yards for the Cougs right now. Cal's got 125. This guy's used to getting the ball more. And here is Harrison. Harrison picks up about four. Going to be stopped short of the 25-yard line. Harrison clearly got tired in the game last week. He had 200 and some yards at halftime. Well, he crossed 1,000 yards last week versus UCLA, but in the fourth quarter, he really struggled. He banged his shoulder a little bit. He was hurt, and he stopped making that cut upfield, and you have to give some credit to UCLA. Their linebackers really improved tackling against him. Brink to throw again. Does so this time for Bumpus. Bumpus has a step. 35-40. Look out. Stop short of midfield. Yeah, the receivers for Washington State got some giddy up. Right now, let's go down to Jim Watson on the sideline. We got a little bit about Bump City, Waddy. Yeah, you know, we were talking with uh, Mike Levenseller, the offensive coordinator for Washington State. And Petros, you asked him about Michael Bumpus and how much fun he has. And he says, hey, when Bumpus is on the field, man, it's like recess. It is fun watching this guy play. That's a little of it right there. He just ran right by one of the California receivers and a well thrown ball by Brink. Brink straight back again. Going to put it up again. Throws too tall for Gibson. Had him out there. One of the few bad passes, actually, that Alex Brink has thrown today. Baylor and Oklahoma are in overtime. What a great comeback by the Bears. There'll be a lot of celebration if they can beat Oklahoma. A lot of teams that have been taking it in the chin from Bob Stoops and those Sooners for the last few years are getting a little bit of revenge this year when the Sooners come to town. Here's a give to Harrison. Harrison's going to get a couple, no more than that. Bears doing a pretty good job in the middle defending the run. A really good job, especially considering that their big guy, the only returning starter from the front seven last year, Brandon Meebane, has not been playing in this football game because of an injury. And that's a nice adjustment by Bob Gregory, the defensive player oh, against the Cal Bears. And there's so Meebane. A little bit. I mean, that's why they can't run. That's, that could have something to do with it. Jeff Tepford said he wasn't sure. He thought maybe me being might be able to give him some minutes. And Brink overthrows a well-covered bumpus that time. So the Cougs will have to give it back to the Bears. 36 ticks remaining in the first quarter. Long first quarter. Tim Mixon, as you can see, number four in the country in punt returns. He'll be standing at about the 10 yard line to receive this punt. And the Bears are going to call for a timeout here. Bears will ask for a timeout. Bears special teams have uh, let them down a little bit. Certainly against UCLA, two big returns by Maurice Drew. Let's take a look right now at the U.S. Bank Pac-10 Players of the Week from last week. And Reggie Bush for his performance against Notre Dame. 160 rushing yards, three scores, and of course that assist on the winning touchdown when he pushed Matt Leinert into the end zone. Keith Ellison, Jeff Tedford was talking about Keith Ellison today or the other day, and he said he's a man. He played huge in that game and was honored for it. Sam Paulescu averaged almost 50 yards a punt in that game against California. A win here in Berkeley for the Beavers. You know what they're starting to call that Reggie Bush play, pushing Matt Leinart into the end zone. You want to take a guess? Go for it. The Bush push. I like it. Going to go down as a legend. The Bush push. Heads up play, and it could have been a penalty. We 
had a conversation with longtime Pac-10 official Bill Richardson, who's now one of the replay officials. He said, by the letter of the law, you could throw the flag, but it's kind of a, a given amongst officials that unless you actually pick the guy up and throw him into the end zone, it's not called. You usually only see it called when it looks like a WWF move. Exactly. You know, an offensive lineman grabs the back and kind of suplexes him back into the end zone. A suplex? I yeah, heard the that one a long time. I was really educated as a child. <laughs> this putt is sent high and deep and will carry into the end zone. And the Bears will start at the 20 yard line. Well, this week on Fox NFL Sunday, the 49ers travel to DC to take on the Redskins, or the Packers and the Vikings will square off, or two first place teams collide as the Red Hot Cowboys battle Sean Alexander and the Seattle Seahawks, or other regional action. It all begins with a look at the Cowboys turnaround on the pregame show Sunday at noon, 9 Pacific. On Fox. Music ran out before I could say, on Fox. <laughs> <laughs> that music haunts me at night. I mean, it's all I hear. <laughs> Bears start at the 20-yard line. Marshawn Lynch is the tailback. Two wideouts, Desan Hawkins. Well, you're going to go up on first down. Steps up, throws, caught by Hawkins. Hawkins tried to avoid the first man and couldn't. Sure tackle that time by Wally Donna. Check out Kyle Bosler, the punter. <laughs> he knows it's too far right away. He's one of the Pac-10's better punters. Oh, the agony of defeat. Yes. Even punters feel it. Uh, well, it's not that bad. He's only about a yard or two deep, actually. He's still apologizing to people on the sideline. I can read lips, you know. He said, my bad baby. Now, there's a the Punters are a unique breed. And with that, we reach the end of the first quarter. It was a long quarter. We'll jump away. Look at the scoreboard. It shows the California Golden Bears 14 and the Washington State Cougars 10. Plenty of offense in the first quarter. Second quarter coming up from Memorial Stadium on the other side of this commercial break. We're coming back. It's an on the field. A little bit of offense in the first uh, quarter, would you say? About 400 yards. <laughs> it's the Pac-10. Tedford loves a Pac-10 shootout. So does Doba. They live for this stuff. Even the coaches are exhausted after a Pac-10 shootout game. Well, that's what we've got here. Ayub give it off this time to Lynch. And Lynch doesn't get much across the 30-yard line, but he will have the first down. Greg Trent on the stop. Trent having a nice ball game after uh, being lit up a little bit last week by UCLA's Mercedes Lewis. Not to mention the exhaustion of the broadcasters after a Pac-10 shootout game. That's right, but it's fun. It makes our job easy. It is a lot of fun. You're going to see Cal just try to smash that ball into the line of scrimmage and keep doing it. They have the running backs to do so. Quarterback has been struggling. The receivers are hurt. Why not? You got the people. Keep running it. Well, they ran it for 125 yards in the first quarter, so you have to think they're going to do it again. They give it ahead to Lynch once more. He picks up about three yards. Pac-10 has been an offensive uh, conference this year. Six teams are ranked in the top 20 nationally in scoring offense. And again, you know, I, I always attribute that to the fact that they run a pretty sophisticated system offensively in the Pac-10. Sophisticated, they spread people out, they get people going. It's not because the defenses are inferior. We're looking at the seventh ranked team. I know that they're down right now, but down right now, but Washington State's offense is the seventh ranked in the United States with 39 points a game. Second down and eight. Hey, you've got to go up. Look out. Steps up. Now he's in trouble. Look down he goes. M. Christo Bruce on the sack that time, second sack of the game, and we'll take you back to the studios once more for a Kiyosara game break. Here again, Mike Goldberg. Mike. Barry, what a great game in Norman, Oklahoma. Baylor scored on their first possession of overtime, a field goal. And then Garrett Hartley had to connect from 39 yards out. He has. We are tied at 30 in the second OT. Oklahoma 14-0 all-time against Baylor. Boy, what a game. Pop Baylor, it off. Baylor has never beaten Oklahoma. And incidentally, that game is in Norman. Third down now, 13. Ayub straight back again. Steps up, throws, caught by Gray, first down Bears. And that was a nice ball thrown by Ayub and an equally nice catch by Gray. 
same two that hooked up on the touchdown earlier. David Grazer Jr. hasn't played a whole lot, just five receptions coming into this game, but he runs a little post route. Once again, abusing the linebacker, Dildine. He's gonna need a little help. The safety, once again, Abdullah, just like on the touchdown play late again, and Gray is starting to do it out there. End of 18. First down at the 46-yard line. Here again, there's Lynch, and he does not get much. Aaron Johnson, the tackle, on the tackle. Picked up a yard, it'll be second and nine. Aaron Johnson's a guy that started as a freshman. He's starting right now with Ai Amu, Ropati Patuatoa, another guy on that Washington State defensive line just getting healthy again. Adam Braidwood's another guy. These guys have been banged up all year. Really the only guy on that Washington State defensive line that's been healthy for the entire year is M. Christo Bruce, and he leads a Pac-10 in sack. Second down and nine is show blitz again, and here it comes, and they give to Lynch, and we're gonna get a penalty, and Cougars might have been across the line of scrimmage a little bit too early, we'll see. They stopped Lynch for no gain on the play. But let's see about the flag. I have an idea that it might possibly have been uh, one of the blitzers who crossed the line of scrimmage a little early. Now that shows you what I know, I'm wrong. It's procedure call against California. Well, when you get those guys creeping up in the gaps, a lot of the time it makes the offensive lineman nervous and somebody jumps. Illegal you see Dova wants him to decline the penalty. The penalty. I'd imagine that's what they're going to do then. Bill Dova says, refuse the penalty. It'll be third and nine. They want California. If they're going to beat them, let them beat them by throwing the football. And now they're in a passing situation. Not worked out the last time. Bears just two of five on third down conversions. Third down and nine. Ayub straight back. Steps up, throws, caught, first down, Cunningham. Inside the 35 at about the 33 yard line. Teams and Abdullah on the tackle. This is exactly what they want Joe Ayub to do. Just a five step drop. See here, he looks very comfortable. He's got great protection from his offensive line. Throws a strike to Cunningham. Another guy with not a lot of experience. Here you see Cunningham just running a very simple in route. This Cal offense is simple. What it has to be is efficient. The ball's got to be there. The routes have to be crisp. Everybody has to be on the same page. With young receivers and an inexperienced quarterback, that's a pretty good play. Abe's confidence has to be growing now. The touchdown, the two big third down plays. Here he is again. Throws caught this time by Hawkins. Great grab by Hawkins. Ayub throwing it into double coverage, and Hawkins coming away with it. Hawkins is a third-string receiver on this Cal team that hasn't really come along the way they thought he would. He's doing this against Alex Teams, the best cover guy Washington State has. And you said it best, Barry, confidence. Ayub is starting to get confidence. It feeds off itself. You complete a couple balls, you complete a couple more, you start going downfield, you start feeling good. And Lavelle Hawkins is a guy that's made a couple plays in this football game thus far. Joe Ayub now 10 of 13 for 131 yards, and he's made some big plays. He and Hawkins, of course, teammates at City College of San Francisco. Give this time to Lynch. Lynch bouncing outside of the 15, trying to get to the corner. Now cuts it back and is down at the 12-yard line. Picked up about six yards on the play. Greg Trent on the tackle, and a flag is down. Now we'll see about the flag. Personal foul against California. And that's the kind of thing that will get, get Jeff Tedford absolutely gnashing his teeth. You see Aaron Murs was a guy shaking his head. That's the right guard for Cal. I'm not sure if he was involved. Sometimes you get an offensive lineman on a run play going downfield. After play, personal foul, number 65 offense. It 15 yards from the end of the play. These Second guys down. are aggressive. And once they get going down the field, you know, they're about 300 pounds. If they run a little while, they want to get a hit. Even if the whistle blows, you see Murs 
He's going to push Abdullah over the pile. That's the right call, though. That was it is the right call. absolutely unnecessary. Nothing whatsoever to do with the play. They don't like to run that far. They want to get a hit if they run that far. That's true. Because <laughs> they get some compensation. Second down, a whole bunch now. Ayub straight back to pass. Now he's going to run. Now he throws it for the end zone. Mandarino can't hang on. Good job defensively that time by Scott Davis on the fullback. Chris Mandarino. And you talk about Jeff Tedford gnashing his teeth. He's always got to be nervous when Ayub takes the ball into his hands, tucks it away, and just tosses it up to his fullback. Really nice play by Scott Davis, just tipping it out of the hands of Mandarino. Mandarino, not a wide receiver by any stretch of the imagination. You got your fullback out there in the end zone stretching out. Got to give the advantage to the linebacker on that one. Third down and 20. Ayub straight back, four-man rush, screen this time for Hawkins. Hawkins tries to get the outside dust, 25-20, caught from behind that time by M. Cristo Bruce. And that'll say something about Bruce, 6'6", 255, and he catches a pretty quick receiver in Lavelle Hawkins. Oklahoma has scored in the second overtime. Baylor still has a chance, however. They have the football, but now they need a touchdown. Uh-oh. That streak may continue. Yes. Might go to 15. Looking grim. You got to give the Bears credit, though, for hanging in there in Norman, Oklahoma. They played pretty well against Nebraska, also only to lose the game. 35 yard field goal try by Tom Schneider for California. Trying to increase the Bears' lead to seven. Schneider hits it, it is on its way, it is no good. So he missed it off to the right side, and the score remains 14 to 10 with 9.07 remaining here in the first half. And with that, we'll jump away. California 14, Washington State 10. Cougars will have it when we come back. Weeknights on FSN. Check this out, Barry, on that last kick. The laces, we'll do it right when we get back. Places we're in. At the 20 yard line, here is a give to Harrison. Harrison scoots outside, gets the 25, close to the 30 yard line. In fact, he might be across. He's only going to mark it about the 27. Now let's look back. Ayub is holding here, and Schneider's the kicker. The kick was no good. Look at him put his foot right on the laces. Now we all saw that movie. Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. You remember about that whole thing? I do remember. Yeah. Ray Finkel was mad at Dan Marino because the laces were in and he missed that field goal in the Super Bowl. Laces out! And you see Schneider look down at his quarterback with a look of disgust. And you know what he said? Laces out. Got to have the laces out. Man. Can't kick those laces. That's why it was no good. Got to get loafer shoes. The loafer ball is on there. What am I talking about? Here's Brink at the 30, 35. Across the 40 to the 41 yard line, a first down. And we go to the sideline, Jim Watson. Waddy? Hey guys, after that last offensive series for the Cougars, Jason Hill not only came out of the game, but he left the field. He went back into the locker room. The trainers had to remove his pants so they could tape his quad, but it has nothing to do with that bruise that kept him out of the Stanford game a couple of weeks ago. He came back onto the bench, he rode the bicycle to stay warm, and he's rejoined the offense, but something to keep an eye on. All right, thanks very much, Waddy. He is out there now. Ball at the 42-yard line. Brink picked up 14 on that play. Play fake again. Brink steps out. Now he throws deep. He's got Hill wide open. And Hill can't quite make the catch. And with that, we'll take a Kyocera game break. Go back and get a check on your game at Norman, Oklahoma with Mike Oberg. Mike? Barry, it is final. Second overtime, OU gets the ball first. Oklahoma's freshman quarterback, Brett Bomar, finds his man corner of the end zone, so Oklahoma scores seven. Then on fourth down, Baylor must score. Incomplete pass. Oklahoma wins in overtime. Two overtimes, 37-30. Thanks very much, Mike. Tough loss for the Baylor Bears. Moral victory? No. <laughs> on the road? No. This is Harrison. Harrison bounces off of one man and now cuts back and gets something out of nothing. Close to midfield. Picked up about seven yards on the play when there was really nothing doing there. Right now, let's take a look at our AFLAC trivia question of the week.
Jerome Harrison, two straight 200 yard rushing games. Which two players share the NCAA record with five straight 200 yard rushing games? That's a tough one. I got a couple names in mind. I got one that I'm thinking of. I'll give some more thought to that. Quick toss this time, and it actually was a good pass for Hill, and Hill just saw it slip through his fingers. We've seen Jason Hill now miss that last ball to the corner, and this one he misses as well. Jim Watson with report that he's got his leg taped up, and it's not related to that thigh bruise that he missed a game with and was hampered with last week. You know what the problem is? When you have one leg injury, you compensate with other muscles in your legs, and other things start to go because you're a sprinter, your balance gets off. And I think that's what Jason Hill's suffering from right now. So the Bears will get it back. Twisting kick and a fair catch going to be called by Mixon at the 16-yard line. And with that, we'll take a timeout. Eight minutes, nine seconds remaining to be played in the first half. California 14, Washington State 10. General back eight minutes nine seconds remaining in the first half 14 to 10 ball game cattle over washington state barry tompkins petros papadakis and jimmy watson on the sidelines bears leading it by four let's take a look at how it's all happened gibson on a 66 yard catch from brink that got the scoring started washington state on top first then it was the bears who came right back marshawn lynch got to the outside and then it was just a foot race b Marshawn Lynch, one of the best backs in the Pac-10, just starting to look healthy. Then, of course, Joe Ayub getting the ball to David Gray, and the Cal offense looking pretty good so far. 270 yards of offense for Cal, and here's Lynch again at the 15 to the 20-yard line, taking people on across the 20 to about the 22, and that's one of the things you really got to like about Marshawn Lynch. He'll hit you, he finishes runs. Really knows how to take the edge, but a lot of backs that take the edge will just go right out of bounds. Marshawn Lynch is a guy that takes the edge, knows when to put his foot in the ground right before the sideline and delivers some punishment right before he steps out of bounds, right before the play is over. That time, Wally Dada received that shoulder pad of Marshawn. Here is he again, probably gonna get the ball. Second down and six, offset eye. And he does get the ball, tries to bounce it outside, now cuts it inside and only gets about a yard. Good job defensively that time by the Cougs. Ai Amu. Ai Amu with the big hair. Only a sack on the season, but he's a plugger. He's a good guy up against the run. And Bill Doba and Aki, his defensive coordinator, was telling us yesterday, Amu is really a guy they'd like to have out there because he brings a lot of energy. Just a freshman, brings a lot of energy to that defense, pumps up the crowd, yells at that D-line. People like the big hair. Does a good job. Can't even see his name. <laughs> it's a short name. He's got a lot of hair. Short name, long hair. Not a good combo if you want to know who the guy is. Third down and five. Hey, <laughs> you're going to throw it. Looking deep this time. Got his tight end. And the catch is made by Stevens for a first down. Craig Stevens has dropped a couple of balls this year. And that was a tough catch. And he did not drop it. Stevens is a guy with some playing experience. Six receptions coming into the game. Scott Davis is the guy he's on. Stevens usually primarily a blocker out of San Pedro, California. Peninsula High graduate. Ah, the Panthers. <laughs> yeah, the angry Panthers. Alice Verdes, California. Ah. First down and 10 for the Bears, 24 yards on that play. And a give this time to Lynch again. Lynch fighting for yards, picks up about seven. Bears doing a nice job up front. And they are playing with not only backups, but backups to backups to backups. A lot of people talking about how good this Cal offensive line was. Well, they do have a lot of guys hurt, Barry. You're right, Cameron is out. O'Callahan is out. Marvin Phillip, the outstanding center, a four-year starter and a great leader, has been hurt this year. He's playing. The thing is, when you have guys that are that good, the guys behind them learn that work ethic, and they end up being pretty good, too. What a very nice job today, I think. 
in motion this time to the near side. Sam Desai now he stops. And the give this time is to Lynch, and Lynch didn't get anything at first. Picked up a little something, maybe a yard. Matt Mullinex, first man to him for the Cougars. It's going to be third down and a little over a yard. Matt Mullenix is a guy they like a whole lot. He's an overachiever, really works hard. Only 256 pounds, playing at the end position. Sometimes he gets down, plays a little tackle. Got two sacks on the year and four quarterback hurries. Really stepped up last week against UCLA. Only thing is Mullenix, you know, sounds like a cereal or some kind. <laughs> With a lot of fiber. He's a regular guy. <laughs> Pitch this time to Lynch, look out. Lynch had that one man to beat and a great job defensively by Eric Frampton. He was out there one on one and it isn't often that you're gonna get Lynch down on a one on one situation like that. Marshawn Lynch on the flip play. This is one thing I've seen him do in this game that I don't like a whole bunch. Stopping his feet. He's done it at the line of scrimmage. He's done it in space. Marshawn Lynch, such a big and physical back. All he's really got to do is pick a side on the safety and try to run through him. But instead, he stops his feet, makes a couple moves, still gets the first down. But that could have been a much bigger gain for Lynch had he just picked those legs up and gone straight down the field. Ball just inside the 43-yard line, out of the I formation once again. Coos come up, crowd the line of scrimmage. AU going up on first down, airs it out deep for Desaad to walk. Alex teams defending. Coog's got a pretty good push on Joe Ayub that time. And the Cougs figure that Ayub is going to take about four or five shots a half down the field, and if they can dodge those bullets, they'll be in good shape. He's taken a couple shots and had a couple touchdown passes. That time he took a shot, and the ball was a little deep. Plus, good coverage by team. Good cover now. Dorsett comes into the ball game now for California. And he gets the ball. And Forsett tried to cut it outside and he got nothing. Still going backward. Scott Davis makes the tackle. Absolutely nothing. We go to the sidelines once more. Jim Watson, what do you got, Waddy? Barry, the running theme, you guys have been talking about it all night. All these injuries to California. Scott Smith, the last left tackle about three plays ago, got up Gimpy. He looked over the sideline, kind of asked to come out. They said, we need you to stay in there. And of course, he's got a tough assignment. He's going up against M. Christo Bruce, and Bruce was involved in that last tackle. Yeah, as a matter of fact, we were talking about how deep the Bears have had to go. Remember that uh, kid named Tepper was supposed to be in fact was supposed to battle Ryan O'Callaghan perhaps for the starting job he uh, injured himself trying to save someone in a car accident and he's out at least for this year and then his backup of course goes down so right now Jonathan Murphy's playing he's the fourth tackle on the right side we got a flag down in the secondary but let's see if a timeout was called first delay of game yep, offense delay of game. five yard penalty Third down. This is not what Cal needs with Ayub. He's supposed to be a little bit more experienced in this. Delay of game penalties shows a little bit of a lack of experience, maybe a lack of discipline. You don't expect to say that about a Jeff Tedford offense, but they're playing with a lot of young guys out there. Wide receiver in the line, really the running backs. Mandarino, Lynch, and Forsett are the only guys that have really been out there along with the center, Marvin Phillip. So now it's third down and long. Bears have converted a couple of these, but can't keep going to that well. Ayub throws through it right in the traffic, and it's almost intercepted by Scott Davis. Couldn't quite hang on to it, though. But Ayub underthrew the ball and almost picked. Check out Scott Davis. Doba told us he's one of the guys that has really stepped up in the absence of Will Chaderning. He is battling Stevens. Very good coverage by a linebacker. Lays out. Looked like Lynn Swan laying out there. Almost comes up with the ball, but doesn't. And poor Stevens catches a knee in the head by two different defenders. So Lonnie comes on to do the punting once again. Lonnie hits this one. It's going to be Bumpus at the 13 yard line. 
he has run out of bounds with a bit of a late hit there. Let's see if there's a flag. Cougars want one, but they're not going to get one. They'll put it in play at about the 18-yard line. Byron Storer was the guy who might have hit him a little bit late, but there was no call. 14 to 10 Bears. When we come back, we'll be going to the Kiyosara studio for game break. Mike Goldberg, DeMarco Farr, Billy Ray Smith getting set for the college football Saturday halftime report. USC, UCLA still unbeaten. And I'll tell you why Reggie Bush is not the best back in Southern California. What? I said it. Are you kidding me? Uh, Drew, we'll continue this discussion during Are our college football Saturday what halftime are you report. About? Barry, <laughs> Pedro's gym. You're not going to want to miss these guys. There may only be one of those guys standing at halftime. A lot of argument in L.A. about who's the best running back. That's true. There's four of us. Harrison on a give this time. We'll get it across the 20 to about the 21 yard line. Pick up about three yards on the play. Harrison has been held in check now. Eight carries, 34 yards. They're going to have to be patient if they want him to have over 100 yards in this football game. They're going to have to keep feeding him. And Harrison's going to have to do a little bit on his own. He's going to have to miss some uh, people. He's going to have to make some people miss. And he's going to have to break a couple tackles and get upfield if he's going to have his normal day of 100 plus yards. Second down and seven. Here's a blitz coming. And Brink under siege has no place to go. Matthew Malele was the guy who was coming the hardest. Bears came off the right side that time. Brink rolled the other way, but that play was busted before it really got started. First down line brought to you by Overstock.com. Save up to 70% every day because, as we all know, it's all about the. Oh. Cougs now third down and 10. They're one of five on third down conversions. Brink straight back. Flagged down, intercepted. Picked off for a touchdown by Van Hoosen. Now let's see about the flag. And the official is holding on the offense. Well, there it is. Touchdown, California. Touchdown. That's a play that the Bears dearly wanted. Washington State trying to run the fire screen and then coming back with what people call a Vegas screen, just an underneath screen to a wide receiver. But Greg Van Hoosen, a guy who's been active in the special teams over the years at his career in Cal, a sophomore, blocked a punt last year. See, they faked that fire screen to Harrison, and then he comes back around. Trying to get the ball to Hill and Van Hoosen there waiting for it. Exciting play for just a second. Traffic point is on its way, and the laces were right this time. And Coops also only had 10 players on the field. So it's good, and the lead has been increased to 11. California 21, Washington State 10. Here it is again. Van Hoosen sprints to his spot, recognizes the screen. Nobody blocks him, steps right in front of Jason Hill takes it into the end zone and check out Jeff Tedford loves to see his defense getting involved in the scoring throwing that number one up I don't think he's saying we're number one no, no. go for one <laughs> dream about that one for a while 16 yards for Van Hoosen nobody touched him by the time he's a grandfather that play will be 75 yards long <laughs> it'll be 25 next year Big play for the Bears defense. He's telling him how he did it. And then I caught it. <laughs> and then. Was it good? Was it good? <laughs> did you see me? Second interception return for a score by the Cal defense this year. The Bears defense still amongst the leaders in Pac-10 conference. They play fast and they play hard. You know what's more pathetic is after a broadcast, you know, you go, oh, did you see me? Did you see me? Did you hear what I said? <laughs> At least that guy's out there catching the ball and doing something. Not you. Twisted kick. <laughs> Gibson will not return this, and the Cougs will start at the 20-yard line. And all of a sudden, the Cougs a little bit out of sync. College Football Saturday on FSN is presented by Kiyosera. Now there's a whole new reason to smile. People-friendly printers and copiers only from Kiyosera. 
and brought to you in part by Blitz, the league. Win at any cost. By Verizon Wireless, we never stop working for you. And the first down line is brought to you by Overstock.com. Save up to 70% every day. It's all about the O. Celionis goes back on Alex Brink now. He starts at the 20-yard line, giving to Harrison on a draw play. Caught from behind for a loss of a couple by Mbunku. And I'll tell you what, Alex Brink is not going to be able to do this himself and bring Washington State back in this football game. He just can't throw it to Hill, and magically the Cougs are going to be ahead before the half. They have got to get that running game going. They have got to find a way to get Harrison some yardage. They've stretched the field pretty well, well with Hill, but Cal's defense is not buying the run game right now from the Cougs. They've got to get it going in this game, at least in the second half, if they're going to have a chance. Second down 11, here comes Hill in motion to the near side. Pitch to Harrison. That's the play that worked so well last week, and it works pretty well this time, too. A big first down and the biggest gain of the ball game for Harrison as Fultz makes the tackle for California, pickup of about 13. And that might be the kind of play that is going to get Harrison back on track. Here's a guy that was a little hurt, didn't have a great fourth quarter, hasn't had a great first quarter. He's got to have a good quarter here. He's got to have a couple of runs, and the Cougs got to score here if they want to have a chance. They're on the road. Bears come with a blitz intercepted again. This time it's picked up by Mixon. Mixon gets it back to the 10 yard line to the five, stopped at about the two yard line. I think it was the blitz that really caused that. Brink had to unload, and Mixon stepped in front, almost took it back but was stopped at the two-yard line. Brink doesn't normally make bad throws, doesn't normally make bad decisions, but the route just jumped by Mixon. Bad throw by Brink. Kind of an athletic play by Norvell Holmes. <laughs> the guard coming in to make the tackle, but very savvy on both interceptions by the Cal defense. 38-yard return by Mixon off the pick. Bears have it at the three-yard line, a chance to bust this one here. Hawkins comes in motion. Give it a Lynch. And Lynch is going to be stood straight up. Might have lost a yard. Let's take another look. Let me do. Bears were coming with a blitz that time. Van Hosen was coming off the side. What's up, Pasta? You watching? a look at Tim Mixon. His sixth career pick on me. interception. Ain't happened all night, baby. We're going to get a timeout called by the Cal Bears with 111 remaining. The ball will be back on the four yard line, second down. So, two picks in a row off that man, Alex Brink. We'll remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll take you back to the guys in the Kyocera Game Day studio Mike Goldberg, DeMarco Farr, Billy Ray Smith. <laughs> That's why he was a linebacker. <laughs> Got a chiseled look, old Billy Ray. In the face. Let's go down to the sidelines now, and uh, Jimmy Watson wants more. Waddy? Yes, yeah, there's no uh, no doubt that Washington State's defense is different without Will Durding in there, the captain out with that MCL strain. He's still in the top 10 all time sacks for the Cougars. Frustrated on the sideline, but hey, he's a captain, so he's finding ways to contribute. He's talking to all the linebackers when they come out, Scott Davis and Steve Dildon, and especially the freshman from Texas, Greg Trent, the guy who replaced him in the middle. Everybody's trying to help the freshman right now, and Petros, you are a captain at USC. Hey, even when you're not playing, you're still a captain, right? Oh yeah, I've been a captain for years, so to speak. <laughs> But I'll tell you what, you know, it really, in camp, was where I was a captain. All the guys would come in my room and cry and say, I want to go home. I miss my girlfriend. And, you know, the old P would play some music for them. And, you know. <laughs> say, what's her number? <laughs> well, just once. Play fake this then. I was going to throw. Now he rolls out. He's in trouble. And he throws it. He ends up caught. Touchdown by Mandarino. Great effort. 
time in this game, we've seen Ayub roll out and try to create something on the run with his fullback, Mandarino. I don't know what these two guys got going on. The first time, it was unsuccessful. That time, Ayub on the run again, creating for himself, gets Mandarino involved in a really nice catch by Chris Mandarino. Big fullback able to get down and snatch that ball up. Here's another look at it. Ayub rolling to his right under siege. <laughs> You would have to think he was trying to throw it away, but of course, if he was trying to throw it away, he would have thrown it out of bounds. Mandarino with a great grab, and, and you have to say, a good pass by Ayub, because only Mandarino was going to catch that, if anybody was going to catch it. Yeah, he kind of threw it straight on the ground, and he threw it away from the hit he was going to take. This is the athleticism of Ayub, and Mandarino just supposed to be in the flat. He's got Dildine facing him, and just kind of improvises. And Leans over and gets it. You see the pressure coming from Eric Frampton. Puts a good hood hit on AU, but AU pops up. He knew he threw a touchdown pass. AU's nothing if not a tough guy. He's a tough guy. Jeff Tedford was telling us he's a tough guy. He's a competitive guy. He likes to create. His confidence has been shaken a little bit this year, and he's had some tough days. He's also had some good days. Just hasn't been as consistent as they need him to be. But he is out there trying to lead this offense, and you got to give him credit for it. Having a good day today, 13 of 19, 167 yards, a couple of touchdowns and one pick. And the Bears lead it 28 to 10 with a minute and four seconds remaining here in the first half. And those two interceptions by Washington State here at the end of the second quarter really hurting their chances to come back in the second half. They haven't been able to run the ball. Brink has not been on track. He's been off track with those two interceptions. Offensively, they're really out of order right now. Gibson at about the two-yard line. Gets back to the 20, cuts it up at the 30-yard line. Nice return by Gibson. 57 seconds left. Now, stranger things have happened. 30-yard return by Gibson on the kick. Justin Forsett on the tackle. We'll see how the Cougars play this here with 57 seconds left. They've had two picks in a row, each has resulted in a California touchdown. So, will they try to uh, put more points on the board? They give it to Harrison. Harrison bounces it outside, and gets about four, maybe five yards. Tim Mixon makes the tackle. Clock continues to run. And they are running out the clock right now, but that was a nice run by Harrison. He's starting to get his wiggle going a little bit. We saw a 10, 13 yard run from him in the last series before the interception. Here he starts out the series with a five yard run. He needs to start going upfield and helping out this offense if they're gonna have a chance. Going up here, looking deep, and Hill can't come down with a jump ball. Well covered that time by Damian Hughes. And Hughes and Hill have been battling all night. Hughes has won some, Hill has won some. These guys are gonna keep going at it. It's gonna get fun in the second half. Here's the battle, the ball's a little underthrown. Hill goes up, gets both hands on it, almost comes away with it on the turnaround. Never gives up on a ball, that Jason Hill. And he's up against a very good corner, and Damian Hughes in a big one, 6-2. And Crenshaw, the Shaw. Brick now 4 out of 15, 178 yards. The give this time is to Harrison. Harrison will try to get the first down, does, and is knocked out of bounds to stop the clock with 47, at the 47-yard line with 18 seconds remaining. And now, uh, you got two, three plays here. The clock would have stopped anyway because of the first down, but now they've got a little more time. Started to say Brink 4 of 15 for 178 yards. Remember, he had a 66-yarder of 81-yard. He hasn't been very efficient today. He's had a couple big plays, but those two interceptions, bad throws by Brink. Now Brink almost tripped up, gains his footing, and dives out of bounds. Nice play that time. Ten seconds left. They're at the 47-yard line of California. Tafizi knocked him out of bounds. Still 10 ticks left, so... And Cal's in a little bit of a precarious situation. Do they double cover Hill and try to prevent him from going deep and Brink hitting him? If they do that and back their safeties up, do they give a draw to Harrison and he gets some yards and maybe Washington State can kick a field goal? This is an interesting play here. 
second down and four, but they'll have to put it down the field here. Brink straight back, steps up, throws, incomplete and almost intercepted. Bump has had it in his hands, but so did Brandon Hampton. Now five seconds left. You see Bumpus against Mixon. Good route runner is Bumpus. Just a zone play on defense. Bumpus gets by Mixon, falls right in front of Hampton. I think he bumped his head kind of hard. He came out, Gibson went in. So now five seconds left, and they'll have to go for it all. Bears backing everybody out defensively. Brink now will roll out, try to buy a little time. Airs it out as far as he can. Gets it down about the five-yard line. It's battled around, knocked down. And the first half will come to an end. California with back-to-back -back interceptions. One for a touchdown by Van Hoosen. And another one by Mixon right here. And you can see uh, Brick never looked his receiver off. And you talked earlier about Mixon jumping the route, P. Mixon kind of baited Brink into throwing that ball. Just tackled very close to the goal line, set up this touchdown, Ayub to Mandarino, and that's really what caused Cal to blow this one up in the second half. All right, well, right now, Jim Watson is with Cal coach Jeff Tedford. Why do you and Barry, everybody wants to talk Cal offense. I'm going to talk Cal defense. Mixon and Van Hoosen, big plays for you guys at the end of the half. Huge plays, yeah. Put us in a situation there to score right at the end, and then, obviously, Van Hoosen's to go in the end zone. Those are huge plays. Jeff, your quarterback had a tough week. I thought he answered his critics pretty well in the first half. He did. He, he's playing well. Little, we need to get him a little bit more consistent. He's doing a fine job of running the offense, so we got a whole half to play. Thanks for your time. We'll let you go talk to the kids. And Barry, let's not get too carried away, but California's defense, remember, number one in the Pac-10. Yeah, that's right. It's easy to overlook that because they have struggled the last couple of weeks, but not so today. 28-10. to 10, The Bears lead it at the half. We take you back to the Kyocera Studios and Mike Goldberg. Barry, thank you very much. We welcome you back. We prepare to start the second half. Barry Tompkins, Petros Papadakis, Jimmy Watson, 28 to 10, California over the Washington State Cougars. Let's take a look at how the Bears have done it without a lot of help. It has been Joe Ayub, 167 yards passing and a couple of touches on 13 of 19. How about Lavelle Hawkins? He stepped up. Six catches. He's one of the big three. He was a fourth string receiver when the season started. And Marshawn Lynch, 97 yards rushing, including a touchdown and a thing of beauty right here. Numbers at the end of the first half. As you can see, California twice the first downs. They have rushed for 146 yards. Passing yardage pretty comparable, but remember most of Washington State's yardage coming on two big plays. Really? 147 of their 178, sorry, Pete. Time of possession is hurting Washington. Inability to run the football hurting Washington State as well. Gibson surrounded and down short of the 15-yard line in the opening kickoff. Jerome Harrison, who had nearly 200 yards last week up at Pullman against UCLA in the first half, 62 yards rushing. And as you can see, 200-plus yards the last two games. He's had nine straight 100-yard games, and he's about halfway there to another 100-yard game, but he's got to have five, six yards to carry here to get his team back in, eat some clock, and really get some confidence back in this entire offense. Here is Harrison, nothing doing. Bears just stopping cold, short of the line of scrimmage. Let's go down to the field, Jimmy Watson. Waddy, what do you got? Barry, I hate to say this, but Petros is absolutely right. I talked to Bill Dova coming out of the <laughs> locker room, and he was lamenting those two interceptions. He said one was Alex Brink's fault. The other one, the guy jumped the route. It was just a real nice play. He does want to run the ball more in the second half, control the clock a little bit, and he says we got to get our defense off the field. They can help themselves with a three and out, but we got to hold the ball for a little while and let these guys get some gas. Well, they just got Jerome Harrison off the field here while you were talking, Waddy, and that I'm looks, on it. looks to be... Perhaps that shoulder again is hanging his right arm a little bit. So DeMondre Woolridge, the freshman from Keller, Texas, 
will take over. Second and ten. There's a reverse this time to Bumpus. Bumpus is surrounded, and tries to change direction. Now tries to kick it outside. Might buy himself a little room here and does. And gets it ahead to about the 19-yard line. A pickup of about five yards. Let's go back and see if we can see what happened to Jerome Harrison, Pete. Here he is running the football, and this is a dangerous situation because his feet are stopped, the whistle's blowing, and you see Fultz just drive him into the ground, and his legs are on top of that neck and shoulder. And right now they're checking Harrison's shoulder to see if it's strong enough, see if he can hold those arms up against the pressure that the trainer's putting on him. He should be back in this football game. Meantime, third and five for the Cougars, and whistles blow. Cougars just two of eight on third downs. California's called a timeout here. So first time out of the second half, called early in the second half, less than a minute into the second half by the Cal Bears. They lead it 28 to 10. We're just underway here in the second half. The Cougars will have it with a third down. Presented by Kyocera. Now there's a whole new reason to smile. People friendly printers and copiers only from Kyocera. And brought to you in part by Fellows, the world's toughest shredders. By Aflac, ask about it at work. And the first down line is brought to you by Overstock.com. Visit Overstock.com today and start saving. It's all about the O. We welcome you back. The Cougars on their first possession of the second half looking at a third down and a long five. Brink going to throw a screen. Bumpus makes the catch. He's going to have the first down across the 25 to the 30-yard line. Pimentel and McCleskey on the stop for California. Good execution that time by the Cougars. That's the same type of screen that was picked off for a touchdown right at the end of the second quarter. This time, Bumpus does a good job coming back to the ball, reaches his hands out and gets it, goes right up the field. That was a big play for the Cougs to keep the football. They have got to get something going, and they need to get a touchdown on the board to stay in this football game right now. Woolridge remains the running back. Here is his first carry, and he is stopped right now. Good out of the field. Jimmy Watson has something on Jerome Harrison, Waddy. Yeah, I'm standing right behind the doctor and Jerome Harrison. They brought him out. It was a stinger. That's what they're telling us. He said he had a little tingling in his hands, so they're having him hold his arms up, hold his shoulders up. They're checking his neck. They looked at his eyes. They're just making sure he's all there. They're just going to keep him out for just a little bit, but you know, these are a lot of the same symptoms I saw from Petros when he came back from the city late last night. <laughs> I'm that late. He's he still got a stinger. <laughs> it was not that late. On the rocks. Brink rolling out this time. Now he looks downfield. He's got his tight end, Benjamin, and that's going to be a big first down for the Cougs across midfield to the 48-yard line of California. Two tight ends in the ball game right there for the Cougs. Starting to get a little creative on offense. You see Cody Boyd, number 80, with the short route. Benjamin, a better playmaker. In the corner, Brink throws it up for him. Very nice play by the Cougs, and now their offense has got a little life. The 48-yard line of California, back-to-back -back first downs, 23 yards on that play. Pitch this time to Woolridge. Woolridge on the short side sweep, getting good, good yardage inside the 40 to the 38, close to a first down. Desmond Bishop on the tackle. And because Harrison carries the ball about 40 times a game, 35 at least, we haven't seen a lot of Woolridge, but he has had a 100-yard game. That was versus Nevada this year. Just a young guy, a freshman out of Keller, Texas. Michael Bumpus, incidentally, limped off the field after that play. He's on the bench now. Second down short. This is Martin in motion. Woolridge gets the call straight ahead, stood straight up, but might have enough for the first down. I think he does. Desmond Bishop on the tackle. And I'm impressed with that kid. Just a freshman, has got to get a first down. Desmond Bishop, a mean, angry junior middle linebacker who's played well. The JC transfer from SFCC. All those guys came from San Francisco City College. Three guys. They got a lot of them here at Cal. Joey Ayub, Lavelle Hawkins. There's a look at Michael Bumpus. He's having what appears to be an ankle tended to. And as you mentioned, Desmond Bishop. They call him the old man because every time he gets up, he kind of walks slowly back to the huddle. Doesn't look like he's got anything left. And then he 
on the next play. It's like he's the energizer bunny. I don't like that, though. You got to pop up and get in the huddle. You don't want to show any weakness. Looks like it was enough for the first down. So a first down at the 38-yard line of California. I like that young freshman running back taking on that mean, angry JC transfer middle linebacker. Getting the first down, lowering his head after he had a big game. That's how you learn to be a running back in the Pac-10. You got to get it two or three times in a game situation. There's nothing like it. Not like practice. It's a pretty good sized package, Woolridge. Greg steps up looking for it all and making a catch for a touchdown. Trandon Harvey, touchdown, Coops. It was Jason Hill, I beg your pardon, and not Trandon Harvey. It was Hill for the score. Harvey had come into the game, but he was not the receiver. It was Hill for the score, and there he is. And it's Hill versus Hughes playing that little hand war with Hughes, and they've been going at it all day. Both guys knew the ball was in the air, both fighting with their hands. Hill with a little tiny push off on Hughes and is able to fall down and make that catch very nice. And now the Coots are going for two. Trying to make this a one possession game, well, a two possession game. Great. Now we got flags. This would make it 20 Final snap, to false 18. start. On the offense, number 86. Five yard penalty. Now they're going to have to kick the extra point because of the false start. So it'll still be a two possession game, but two touchdowns. And that's exactly what the Cougs needed. They needed to go down the field. They got the run game going, not with Harrison, but with the freshman Woolridge. And then they were able to go up top to their guy, Hill, who was a numbers machine and a guy that really can stretch the field in this league. Nice snap, but it's gotten down nicely, and the try for point is up and good, and it's a 28 to 17 ball game. So the Cougs get right back in it on an impressive drive and the touchdown pass from Brink to Hill. 12-01 remaining third quarter. Bears still lead it, but the lead cut to 11. We're coming back. Welcome back, 28 to 17 ball game. Now Washington State, eight plays, 86 yards, and the touchdown pass from Brink to Hill. And they're right back in his ball game now. Plenty of time, 12-01 remaining to be played here in the third quarter. Bears will have it for the first time in the second half. Sidarius to kick it away. O'Keefe and Lynch in tandem at about the five yard line. Fans all fired up here. High, short, end of a end kick. Lynch at the 10 yard line. At the 15 to the 20 and runs in right into the arms that time of Mike Grace. Well, Totally Football is your home for the latest information on both college and the NFL all season long. With interviews, analysis, and breakdowns of the key matchups, we got everything you need to get ready for kickoff. Totally Football, Monday through Wednesday at 6. Only on FSN. So the Bears will start at the 24 yard line. Hits the tailback in the offset eye. And you ball away quarterback. This is Lynch. Trying to get to the corner. Slip by the first man. But Good pursuit that time by Washington State. Limited that game to about two yards. And you're going to see Cal giving the ball a lot to Marshawn Lynch here in the second half. 
He's healthier than he's been most of the season. That finger is just taped to another finger. He can use that other hand to fend off tacklers. And he's a big guy, 215 pounds, gained a lot of weight in the offseason. Here's a guy that is going to have to bang it out in the second half for Cal and protect the lead that they have right now. Now right at that 100-yard mark. See the Bears have had 100-yard rusher 19 of their last 20 games. Ayub short drop, little hitch for Hawkins incomplete. Once again, the lack of accuracy in the short passing game bites Ayub and, in turn, his entire Cal offense. Hawkins was open on the hitch. That's the type of play they like to get. It with a second down play, might have got him a first down, would have made a more manageable third down situation. And Ayub just not accurate enough to get it out there in the arms of his receiver. Third down and seven now. Bears five of nine and third down conversions. Four-man rush, Ayub straight back, look out! And it was M. Christo Bruce, the Pac-10 leader in sacks, who got him that time. And I mean he got him. He really did get him, that's a kill shot. Very nice spin move on Scott Smith. No help on the inside for Smith, and M. Christo Bruce with another sack and a sack celebration. You know, he shook my hand yesterday, and his hand was like was like a python. He just swallowed me. And huge hands on him, Christo. One of 11 kids. Turner's going to be the deep man now to receive this punt. Washington State right back in the fray here. Twisting kick sends Turner to the near sideline. Starts back and he's just undressed. I mean, he was just creamed that time by Justin Moore. Let's go down to the sideline now. Jim Watson with an update on Bump City. Why? Yeah, the reason Turner was in there returning that punt for the Cougars because Michael Bumpus is out of this game. In fact, he is on his way into the locker room. They're actually going to take him to the Cal locker room to get an X-ray. He got banged right above the ankle, right below the shin, and right in front. The doctors took his shoe off. They took his wrap off. They rubbed it. He kept trying to talk him into getting back in the game, but every time he got up, that thing just gave way. So they're going to take a look at it. All right, thanks very much, Roddy. We'll stay on top of that one. Harrison back in the ball game now, and this is Jerome Harrison. Tried to kick it to the outside, couldn't do it. Picked up about two, a little more. Numbers now for Alex Brink. He's only completed seven passes, but for 249 yards and a couple of scores. Now Harrison will come out. And you see the guys on the defensive line for Cal, Matthew Malele. Tosh Lupoy, who was in on that tackle, these guys starting to feel it, starting to feel confident. They know that they have Harrison on his heels. They've been intimidating him all day. And once a guy gets a hand on him, he hasn't been able to get away. Blitz comes this time, and Brink unloads it. He's got Hill out there again. Hill makes the catch. Foot race to the end zone. Touchdown, Coons. What a great job by Brink to hang in there because he got nailed right after he threw that ball. Great throw by Brink, and even better. Clinic being put on right now by Jason Hill, just using up Damian Hughes. He's winning that war. Here's the pressure on Brink. Ooh, he takes a big hit from Nuu Tafisi. But stands in there, steps into the throw, gets it out to Hill. Just a beautiful display of speed by Jason Hill. He can really stretch the field, and right now, Damian Hughes is suffering against him. Doesn't like going on one-on-one -on -one with Jason Hill. Who would? And now the Coons go for two again. They're going for two. They're getting beat up on the long ball. 62 yards on that touchdown pass. Out of the gun this time. Brink straight back with time. Throws. Caught for the extra point. A two-point conversion to the tight end, Troy Benjamin. And that has taken a lot of the zip out of this crowd. 28-25, 10-09 remaining, and the Cougars have gotten themselves within a field goal. Cal will have it when we come back to Berkeley after this. Right now, just putting on a clinic. 28-25, Hill now four catches in the game for 189 yards and two touchdowns. 
And Alex Brink, we mentioned this earlier, hadn't completed a lot of passes, only eight, but he's averaging right around 40 yards per completion. It's going to be Lynch at the five yard line for California. Steps over the first man. Slipped out of a couple more tackles, but is down at about the 24 yard line. Let's take a look at that last touchdown. And as we said, this is a clinic. Pure speed from Jason Hill. There's Hughes, and you're just going to see a straight route. Hughes gets caught looking a little bit in the backfield. Look at the speed of Hill going right by Hughes, who's a really good cornerback. Four interceptions, six breakups on the year. But Hill, too fast, way too fast for a quarterback to peek in that backfield. The second you peek with those eyes, he goes right by it. Can't so, guard him one-on-one. -on -one. Now the Bears will start again. And here's a reverse this time to Hawkins. Hawkins to 20 at the 25. And he stopped short of the 30 yard line. A pickup of about five. Incidentally, one more note on Jason Hill. He has now tied the school record at Washington State for touchdowns receiving 22 in his career at Washington State for Jason Hill. And Hill, of course, will be back next year. He will be back next year. And here's a guy that's energized his entire team, even the defensive side of the ball. You just saw M. Cristo Bruce, a defensive end, sprinting, chasing Hawkins to the sideline. A big hit by Alex Teams on the sideline. The Cougs got some life right now, Barry. Second and four for California. Blitz comes, quick toss this time. A catch made by Cunningham. It'll be a bear first down at the 40-yard line. Three catches for Cunningham, who is playing his first minutes of the season. A redshirt freshman from Fairfield, just about a half hour up the road from here, about halfway to Sacramento. And this is what Cal needs to control the game. They got a lot of young guys, and that's the problem for Cal right now. Jeff Tedford told us yesterday, a young team plus injuries equals trouble. It's okay if you have a young team. It's okay if you have a veteran team and you have some injuries, but if you have them both, you're going to have a high mountain to climb. Justin Forsett in the ball game now at the tailback spot. Here's Forsett, right side, trying to get outside at the 40-yard line. Does so, and is across midfield about the 47-yard line. Forsett gets there in a hurry. You talked about it earlier. He does get there in a hurry, and right now, if I'm Jeff Tedford, I leave Forsett in the football game. He's got fresh legs. Lynch has been returning kicks, doing a lot of things. You see Forsett fake it inside and he's able to get that corner got a good block on the outside from his receiver and he's got some excitement he's got some enthusiasm starting to pump up that team i'd give it to him again so the bears coming right back after giving up two quick touchdowns four set now 64 yards on the ground give it a four set again right up the gut a little bit of room at the 40 yard line breaks it down to the 30 yard line justin four set Forsett will leave and Lynch will come back. So the tag team match of Forsett and Lynch starting to pick up big yards. That was just a gap play and it really opened up well. Aaron Murs comes around and makes a really nice block and Forsett knows how to get upfield. And for a little guy, he's not easy to bring down when he gets to the second level of that defense. At the 30 yard line now. 19 yards on that last play from Forsett. And Lynch out as a receiver, and they're going to Lynch. Lynch can't catch up with it. Ball was thrown to the corner, and Lynch was all locked up with Alex Teams, never had a chance. The ball was never really catchable anyway. You really aired that one out. Thought Lynch was going to run under it. And Lynch is a tailback. He's a very versatile guy, but not quite like a Reggie Bush where you can line him up outside and expect him to beat a corner, especially one like Alex Teams out on the perimeter. Bears have rushed for 180 yards in this ball game. But the lead is only three, and there's a world of time left, 850 in the third quarter. Ayub on a draw play to Lynch this time, and that's closed down fairly quickly. Lynch gets about five, and Christo Bruce closes it down. And a nice play by Bruce getting down the line, recognizing the draw, not going too far upfield from his defensive end position. 
and getting his big hands on the legs of Marshawn Lynch. First down line brought to you by Overstock.com. Visit Overstock.com today. Start saving because we all know it's all about the... That I do at that time. It was good. Nice straight read. Third down and five for the Bears. AU going up. Now he's in trouble. Bounces out of there. He's got room. Puts the shoulders down and takes a real shot short of the first down. But bounces right back up. We said he's nothing if not a tough guy. Oh, he's a tough guy, but he's not going to want to do that again. Lowers his head on Scott Davis and Greg Trent. Two pretty heavy linebackers. This all starts because Braidwood beats Lynch on the edge and ugh. it was really Davis that delivered that blow. Put the wood to him. Fourth down now, and the Bears with a fourth and short. They went with a quarterback sneak the last time they were in this situation. See what they do here. Lynch the tailback. Go with a sneak again, and again they get it. Center of the cow line, Robertson, Phillip, and Mertz. Getting a little bit of a push, and they gave Ayub enough for the first down inside the 30-yard line. Marvin Phillip, a returning All-American, really the heart of this Cal offense, the center. Joe Ayub does a good job getting that snap, giving Phillip a second to drive his man off the ball, and just getting behind him and falling forward. I'm surprised he was able to get a snap or even get up to the line and call the play after that hit he took. Don't take on Pac-10 linebackers like that if you're a quarterback. I'm kidding. 19-yard line now, first down for the Bears. Give it to Lynch, Lynch trying to find some place to go. Now he finds a little bit of room. Still on his feet at the 15, and fighting for yardage out of the 12-yard line. That was a thing of beauty, and so, of course, is Jim Watson. <laughs> Very nice, Barry, I'll take that segue. <laughs> you guys, on that last collision, Ayub and, and Scott Davis went head to head, and surprisingly, it was Scott Davis, who was the guy who had the bird circle in his head. He got up, he was a little woozy afterwards. You know he's gonna hear about it, running into a quarterback and then getting up second. And Petros, remember at practice yesterday, when we talked with Jeff Tedford, you asked him, do you mind when your quarterback runs? And he says, well, you know, I'm glad when he gets first downs for us, but I hold my breath every time. Well, Ayub still on his feet. There's a cow bear down on the field. Try to get an identification. It looks like Eric Robertson. Of course, that is the, a position the Bears can least afford to be hurt any more than they already are. O'Callaghan is out. Cameron is out for the season. Robertson, the starting guard. Normally, Jonathan Murphy is his backup, but he's playing over at the tackle spot for O'Callaghan. May have just gotten the wind knocked out of him. And whenever you have a back like Marshawn Lynch, who stays up and is hard to tackle, a lot of these offensive linemen collide with each other. You see Robertson, his head runs right into Jonathan Murphy's sternum area. Might have jammed his neck a little bit, but looks to be okay. Yeah, he does. He'll, He'll jog, jog off. off the field, yeah. Love to see that especially with the big guys. Robertson is majoring here at Cal in Scandinavia. I'm not sure what you do with that major. They have a high standard of living. What you do is you cook fish in a brick oven at That's your house. <laughs> you live true. to be 120. <laughs> they live better than us up there. Eat whale fat. This is good to Mandarino. Mandarino's going to be stopped short of the first down. And the Huskies are ready. The Cougars are saying they have the football. Dada came out of there with the ball, and the officials will agree. Turnover. Braidwood might have taken it right out of the hands. And Dada wound up with control of the football. Mandarino just had it swiped from him. It was just that simple. That's the third carry of the game for Mandarino, and I know he scored a touchdown catching a pass, but fullback stays up too long. Dada rips that ball out, and that's a tough play for Mandarino. The guy's trying to get extra yardage, trying to stay up, but it's great defense by the Cougs. If everybody's got a hold of the guy, and you can see the ball, you take a swipe at it. That's textbook Division I college defense. Take a swipe at that ball, see if you can get it out. 
And a fullback that's not used to that type of thing doesn't get a lot of carries. See if Alex Brink doesn't try to go for the juggler right here. They've made big plays. They're wearing out the California corner. Brink, quick toss this time. That's Martin, and he is cracked by Nixon. Good, clean tackle by Nixon. Just a bubble screen. Nixon reads it right away, makes a nice tackle right on the legs of Martin. Cal's going to need a stop here because Washington State's got a lot of momentum with that turnover and the way they've been stretching the field. And Cal's inexperienced defensively. Look at this. The Cougars come to the line of scrimmage and they catch Cal completely out of position. But the Bears recover nicely and knock Harrison out of bounds. Brick was very upset with himself. Maybe that he didn't check into the right play. Check out Cal. They huddled in the wrong spot. Everybody's trying to get over. And Brink is angry that he just didn't check to that wide receiver and go deep. Vicky Pimentel and Thomas DeGood make the tackle on Harrison. Harrison has not been able to get going today. I don't know if that true freshman shouldn't get a look right now in the second half. And the result was a loss on the play. And Woolridge is in the ballgame. Brink straight back. Swing for Woolridge, and it's too tall for him. Woolridge's not a very big guy at 5'8. And we talked about this when you throw the ball to your backs, it has to be more accurate than when you throw it to your wide receiver. You have to put it right on that back's numbers, and Brink doesn't do it for his freshman, especially with a freshman out there. Put it in his arms so he can run with the football. He's a running back, not a receiver. And Brink pays the price now. The team's got a punt. So Bosler will kick it out of his own end zone. Bears pretty adept at blocking punts. See if they come after this if they try to play for the return. They do come after it. They don't get it. And a pretty good kick driven out of there by Bosler. Nixon at the 44-yard line trips and falls. For Joe Ayub, 14 of 22, 177 yards. Has gotten it done for the most part. He's done pretty well. He's hit some passes. He's gotten his young guys involved. He's led the team. He showed some enthusiasm. Overall, I like him. But he still has trouble in that short passing game. One out of every three throws is off to these receivers. And that just doesn't work in Jeff Tedford's offense. Those two throws have got to be on the money. Doesn't have to be Aaron Rodgers out there, who was pretty much perfect, but he's got to have a higher percentage. Eric Robertson is on the back of the ball game at the left guard spot. And you going up that first down. Look out. Throws downfield for Hawkins. Stretches out. Can't quite get it. A.U. was cracked right after he threw the ball once again. And Hawkins a little bit shaken up also. Hawkins may have had the wind knocked out of him laying out like that on that field turf. He bounced on it. Here's Hawkins, a guy with a lot of natural ability, but just hasn't owned that position. Fakes the out, and then goes straight up field. Lays out. Got to make that play as a junior out of Stockton, California. The coverage by Wally Dada, who was on him pretty good. And now Hawkins is down with the wind knocked out of him. Hey, you put it in a pretty good place. Should have been caught. You got to make those plays. And that's what Cal's lacking right now in their receiving core. They don't have their normal guys in there. They Sean. don't have Deshaun Jackson. Robert Jordan is also out. And Noah Smith, who was their third receiver, was injured in the first game of the season, and he's gone. Actually, oddly enough, he was injured on a touchdown pass. And here in the second half of a game that's tight, where you have a Pac-10 squad with a lot of weapons throwing them all at you, the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune all around you, you need people to step up and make plays, especially in the receiving game with an inexperienced quarterback. Hawkins has got to make that catch. So Hawkins still trying to gather himself here. He's down at the 20-yard line. Lost his win there. Perfectly timed jump. Both hands on the ball. Dotted did a good job of jumping too and breaking that arm across the shoulder of Hawkins. And when you're exposed like that with your body, it just takes the wind out of you. Did that ever happen to you? 
It has happened to me, actually, and it, it, it's a horrible feeling. Somebody throws a basketball at you too hard. That's how it actually it happened in a basketball game, and I fell, and somebody jumped on my back. Happened to me the other day when I opened the uh, refrigerator into myself. Hard to get a strain like that. I know. Those are... <laughs> You can land on the remote when you jump on the couch, that type of thing. Exactly. Roll over, keep possession. Second down and 10. AU, straight back. Look at that screen, almost picked. M. Christo Bruce just wrecked that play. And you know, for the great pass rusher that M. Cruise, M. Christo Bruce is, he's recognized draws and he's recognized screens very well in this game, too. You expect a guy like that to fly upfield and cause trouble for the quarterback on every play with reckless abandon. But Bruce, very smart player. Sees draws, sees screens. Braidwood with the pressure that time, his other end. Third down and 10 now for the Bears. Bears have come up empty here in the second half. Abe straight back under pressure, almost picked through it. Right smack into the hands that time of Adam Braidwood. It was almost too easy. And there we see one of the other ends for Washington State, showing a lot of savvy against Cal's screen game. Cal's trying to get that screen game going. They might want to give that up. Washington State's reading all their screens. Their underneath screens, their wide receiver screens, and their tailback screens. Pretty much have the screen. So Loney to punt. Coog's loading up the left side here. See if they come after this. Turner the deep man. They do come after it, and they don't get it. Turner, fair catch. And he doesn't make it, ball's loose, and it's out of bounds. And boy, did the Cougars dodge a bullet there. What a break for the Cougs. Turner out there, not the normal punt returner, tries to fair catch it. Just looks like a circus trying to field that punt. Check him out. Uh, <laughs> ball bounces off his chin. And then Moy just had it go off his chest and out of bounds. What a break. 43-yard punt, and as it turns out, no return. That's usually the job, of course, of Michael Bumpus, but he is in the locker room, as Jim Watson pointed out, and the X-rays on an anchor. Harrison back in the ball game. Coog start deep in their own territory at the 11-yard line. This is Harrison. Harrison gets a little gap and gets it ahead to about the 19, picked up about eight on the play. Ryan Fultz on the tackle for the Bears. You know, it's funny, we were sitting with Bill Doba yesterday in a hotel with a big table, and he looked me right in the eyes. He said, you know what, we just need some luck. Even when we've had great years, we've had a little bit of luck here and there, and we haven't had a lot of luck this year. That was pretty lucky right there. Harrison has 72 yards rushing, but it hasn't been of a spectacular nature that it was earlier this year. There he is again, right up the gut, and he's going to be close to a first down, but I think a little bit short. Let's go back to our Aflac trivia question. We never really done. O.J. Simpson was one guy that I was thinking of, but let's see what we got here. Jerome Harrison, two straight 200-yard rushing games, so which two players share the NCAA record with five straight? And the answer is... Marcus Allen and Barry Sanders. Well, there you are. Shocker. Ron Dane, I thought. Yeah, he had a few big games. Ricky Williams and his neck beard. Third down and very short, just a few inches here. Harrison the tailback. And they gave it to Harrison. Harrison's first down and more busted. Gets to the outside of the 40, midfield to the 45, the 40, and dragged down from behind that time on a saving tackle by Thomas Deku. Well, I was calling for Harrison's removal a little while ago because he's been banged up in the shoulder, hasn't looked like himself. This is Jerome Harrison running the zone play. Beautiful cut right up underneath his offensive lineman, and then he does what he does best in the secondary making people run, turn around, spin, trying to find him, just a little guy. What a nice cut on Randy Bundy. Bundy didn't know where he was. 42 yards, and now he's up over 100 yards, 115. 
Brink checking off here. First out of 38 here on line of California. Brink on a throw. Airs it out deep once more. And Hill hangs on off the fingertips of Nixon for his third touchdown. And the Cougs have taken the lead. Great concentration. This is just what the doctor ordered for the Cougs coming back in the second half. They haven't been a second half team all year. Hughes is getting used up by Hill, so they put Mixon on him. The ball's underthrown. Mixon gets a hand on the ball, but Hill just too good. Maybe a little luck that Doble was talking about. The ball gets into the hands of the wide receiver, Jason Hill. Three touchdowns on the night. Woo. You know, when they talk about Brink being a good manager of the game, much like Matt Liner, he checked off to that play, single coverage on Hill, and it paid off. And just like that, with the conversion, it's a 32 to 28 Washington State lead over California. There's a game they want. Kicks to Lynch, who handles it at about the six yard line. Now he's gonna try to go back the other way, and he is tripped up, slowed up at least, and then just crushed. Grace was the first man, and he just hung on for dear life until he got help. Watch the play here by Hill once again. You say concentration, a little bit of a push in the back, but that's what it takes to be a good receiver. You got to know when to cheat. You got to know how to do it. Just puts the hand right in the center of the back of Mixon, comes up with the football. And for Jason Hill on the night, that's five catches, 227 yards and three touchdowns. We talked to the offensive coordinator, Mike Levenseller, yesterday. He's coming off that thigh bruise. He said, I worked him out pretty hard this week. Really pushed him. He's getting pushed right now as well out of the football field. Now the Bears got to play catch up. Here's for a set breaking run. He gets into the secondary. Picks up about 14 yards. It's going to be a track lead here, Pete. And you know, every time Forsett gets the ball, he's making something happen. I don't know if I wouldn't leave him in. Just a nice little zone play for set. Sees the open part of the field, takes it there, gets the ball upfield, puts a move on the safety, Hussein Abdullah. And that's a nice positive play for Cal. They need more of those. They got a score now, they're behind. Lavelle Hawkins incidentally back in the ball game after, uh, as you mentioned, getting the win knocked out in the previous series. He's in the slot to the left side, now goes in motion. Give us the four set again. Four set bounce it outside. Gets a little bit of room. He'll pick up another first down right at about the 39 yard line. That will take Justin Forsett over 100 yards. So the Bears with two 100 yard plus rushers so far tonight. This is another very nice run by Forsett. Takes it all the way up. Sells that he's going inside. Gets to the edge. Another move on Abdullah who just can't track Forsett down. Right to the sticks. But doesn't get the first. Second. Yard short. 106 yards now for Justin Forsett on 10 carries. Forsett again with a Lynch right up the gut. And Lynch gets into the secondary and has more than a first down right at about midfield. So the Bears able to run the football. And that is something they have been very consistent with this year. Marshawn Lynch with a very nice little wiggle right at the line of scrimmage. Just doesn't know when to get down. Takes a lot of unnecessary hits. You gotta get below that wave. You see the two running backs going for Cal right now. Lynch with 20 carries. 6.2 yard average for set with a 10 yard average. A little over that for the game. Came into the game with an eight yard average per carry. M. Christo Bruce has uh, come off the field limping. They're tending to him on the sideline now. He's down on the ground. Could just be a cramp. Give this time is the four set again, and this time he is stopped right as he gets started. So that time the Cooks closed it down. 134 left third quarter, 32-28. Cougars having come back. This is a big play for Cal. They have to get some positive yardage on second down. They have to use their quarterback. They have to use their receivers. Get something going and then get right back to that run game that's been working so well. Double slot, single setback. That snap there, Ayu throws in and out of the hands of Stevens. Can't hang on, he's had his troubles. He was open that time, 
that play was kind of crashed because it looked to me like a bad snap between the center Phillip and Joe Ayu. But Ayub still able to get rid of the ball to Stevens. Stevens just can't hang on. And now a third and long for Cal. With the way Jason Hill's going, they have to convert right now. They have to convert and get back to running that football. Lynch will be the tailback. Big play here for the Bears. Cougars showing blitz. Now they back out of it. Ayub straight back, in trouble. Hit as he throws, incomplete. Threw it behind the side. And it was Braidwood who was right in the grill of Joe Ayub. And the Bears will have to give it up. And Ayub here in the second half, just one of seven. And that's not going to get it done. Strongest guy on the team, Adam Braidwood, coming in and showing Joe Ayub just how strong he is, hitting him right in the back. He's had a bad shoulder and an elbow, but Braidwood has really shown up for this Cougar defense today. Lonnie DuPont and Gibson will be the deep man this time. They will not let Turner do it again. He fumbled the last one. And of course, Bumpus is out for the moment. Loney he hits this one pretty good. And it's Harvey who's the deep man. He's gonna let it go into the end zone. But this third quarter has been the Jason Hill story. Three touchdown catches for the San Francisco native. Playing before the home folk, and boy, is he playing. Yeah, it's been a really nice homecoming. You see two against Hughes. Then he goes to the other side and picks on Mixon. You've got some people in the stands? No question about it. Washington State now coming up close to 500 yards of offense, and the Bears not exactly chopped liver either. They're over 400 yards. Harrison this time slips and falls right as he gets started at the line of scrimmage. Inside a minute remaining now in the third quarter. And if you're Cal, you just got to put a safety over the top. You have to put a safety over the top and a corner on Jason Hill. You can't leave him out there alone with one of these corners because he's beating them both. Blitz comes, throw underneath, caught this time with a tight end Boyd. Well short of the first down. It's a pickup of only about three yards. Ryan Fultz made the tackle. Zach Follett was coming hard, but uh, Brick did well to unload the football. And with that, we have reached the end of the third quarter with uh, the Washington State Cougars uh, coming back from a 28 to 10 halftime deficit. They were 18 down. Now they lead it by five. One quarter of football remaining, and it's the Cougars over the Bears. 32 to 28. Fourth quarter coming up on the other side of this commercial message. Don't go away. When you're smiling. When we welcome you back. California led it 28 to 10 at the half. But how about Jason Hill? Three touchdown catches in the third quarter. We start the fourth period. Third down and seven. Brick straight back to pass. Now it opens up and he can run. And he will be short of the first down. As he crosses the 25-yard line, the Cougs will have to give it back to the California Golden Bears. And Ayub's going to have another shot to lead his team down the field. Brink is not afraid to run that football. We saw him with a touchdown run last week against UCLA at home. Not a big physical kid, but not scared to go out there and make one or two cuts and lead with the top part of his body. Bosler to punt it away. Mixon will be the deep man for California. And Bosler drives this one. Mixon, fair catch at the 30-yard line. That's where the Bears will start. Bears have run the ball well here in the second half, but uh, Joe Ayub just one of seven. So not much balance for California. And look at the Bears' last four possessions. Three punts and a fumble when they were driving. So they're going to have to right the ship here. They need one of their guys to step up. It's that simple. It's going to be Ayub or Lynch or Hawkins or Forsett. Somebody's going to have to step up, make a big play, take this game back from the Cougs. Start with a trips left formation. And they give it to Lynch, and Lynch pops it outside. He's on his way again. First down and more. Pickup of about 16 for Marshawn Lynch on first down. Teams and Abdullah 
team to make the tackle, but another great run for Marshawn Lynch. There may not be a harder running guy out there. He takes an ISO play all the way outside, gets up underneath his wide receiver, and he refuses to go down when he runs the football. That's a good and bad thing. Get hurt like that, but you can also gain extra yardage. Tough balance, though. Sometimes it's the extra yardage worth that, worth that extra hit. Tough to say. Jeff said he was all business at uh, practice this week. 21 carries, 140 yards. A.U. going up, he's in trouble. Uh, threw it from his knees. Probably not a great idea in and out of the hands of Stevens. M. Christo Bruce had him wrapped up by the ankles. Here's Ayub. A lot of pressure from both ends. Let's go down to the sidelines now. Jim Watson with more on M. Christo Bruce, who's gutsing it out, isn't he? Yeah, Barry, obviously he is back in the game. He had a knee sprain that last series, and he was overworking it on the sideline. He said, let me back in, let me back in. They said, if you can run, you can play. Well, he ran, and he's in. Tough guy. Remember Bill Dobin telling us last week he was born talking. Give this time is to Lynch. Trying to get outside, he's surrounded this time. Again, he takes on defenders, and he always gets a little something extra. Actually wound up picking up about four yards on that play. And that time it was Don Turner just taking it right in the neck from Marshawn Lynch. He delivers a blow when he runs the football. And this is a guy, once he gets it all straight, once he gets his hands back, again, he's still got that hand injury, and that's a problem for him. But once he gets it all straight, this guy is going to wreck shop in the Pac-10. He's doing it now. Third down and five, big play for the Bears. Long count for AU. He's going to put it up. Throws. Good defensive play. Picked off. Intercepted by Abdullah again, a reflection, and again, the Cougs come away with it. It was off the fingertips of Sam Desai, the intended receiver, and into the waiting arms of Hussein Abdullah. Hey, you tried to force that ball in there. Eric Frampton Jr., the strong safety, able to lay out and get an arm on it. Bounced off somebody's thigh. And Abdullah with the interception. That was Frampton really made a nice play. I think he knocked it out of the hands of the side. I think the side actually had it. Here's Brick trying to put the icing on a cake. Hill underneath makes the catch on his back. And that'll be a first down. The crowd doesn't like it. They thought it was an incomplete pass. I don't think so. Here's another look at it. Looked to me like he caught it on his back. Just an in route. Hill gets it. Catches it and is down, and the ball pops out. But the whistle would have blown by then. That's a catch. Blitz comes. All out blitz. And Brick going for it all. All kinds of contact on the sideline. Cougar screaming for a flag against Damian Hughes. They won't get it. There was contact on both sides. The ball wasn't going to be caught under any circumstances. The Cougs keep socking it to these Cal corners, and Hughes and Mixon are out there fighting for their lives on an island. Right now, this Bear defense getting hurt by the no huddle. They're going to have to step up, just like the offense. One of their big-time guys, McCleskey, one of these corners, going to have to make a play. There's Harrison on the short side sweep. Doesn't get much. Didn't get that first block from Gibson. And the Bears turn that play in after a pickup of a yard. It'll be third and nine, Damian Hughes on the stop for California. Isn't it interesting that it's colder here in Berkeley than it was for us last week in Pullman? You're the weather guy, not me. I just show up. <laughs> I can chilling, see my man. breath, yeah. It's chilly. Fall, it's football weather. Perfect. Empty backfield. Brink fakes the hitch pass to Harrison, now trying to get people to run downfield. And Brink finally throws it, coming back to the ball. Gibson 
And they're going to call it a catch. I believe they are, and it's going to be a first down. What a play. Sure was. What a play by Brink. Doesn't get the screen smart enough to see that his screen to Harrison was not there. He wanted to throw a screen to the left side to Harrison. So then he starts rolling out to the opposite side, tries to direct some traffic, gets people to go downfield, and gets the ball to Gibson right in front of Foltz. Mismatch wide receiver on a linebacker. Keeps the drive alive for the Cougs. This kid's stepping up in the fourth quarter. Here's Brink play fake. He's looking for Hill again. Throws, and Hill can't get tall enough to get that one. Now that's a miscue by Brink. Hill was open. Going to the post. He had beat Mixon. Got to give it to those guys on the offensive line for the Cougs, Barry. Absolutely. Bobby Bird, Sean O'Connor, Nick Wilheiser, Norval Holmes, and Charles Harris. Sophomore, two juniors, a couple of seniors. Second and ten. And Brink will check off. Last time he did that was a touchdown. Give it this time to Harrison, right up the gut, pops into the secondary. Will be stopped short of the first down on a nice tackle by Donnie McCleskey, who doesn't miss too many. A little woofing going on between McCleskey and Harrison. Now you don't often see, there you see the guard, Norvell Holmes is gonna come around, and make a very nice block. On Follett, the linebacker, to Spring Harrison. You don't see quarterbacks often checking into a run play. And Brink does it better than anybody in the Pac-10. Knows when to check into those run plays. A lot of the time, quarterbacks check into plays where they can throw the ball deep. And he's gonna call a timeout this time. Saw something he didn't like, and, or something that he could not check to. And so, seeing as this is an important third down play, Brink decides he will call the timeout, talk it over with the coaching staff. We'll take a break as well. 10.42 left of the ball game. 32-28, Cougs. This guy. 32-28, they lead the ball game, looking now at a third down and about four. Brick straight back. Throws this time for Harrison. He's got the first down inside the 20 yard line at about the 18. Nothing fancy, just effective. They line Harrison up in the backfield and he just takes off for the flat. Nobody really on him, a very soft coverage. Here you see him. He's just gonna come out here to the flat. Very easy first down for the Cougs. Anthony Felder, the young linebacker, just doesn't get to the tailback in time. First down, just inside the 20. Play fake, Brink will throw, looks to the end zone. Hill, and that time he couldn't get it. The ball was thrown a little bit behind him. And Brink had to unload that ball as he was getting big pressure from Mixon. Now, Mixon was one that knocked it down in the end zone. Maybe. You're gonna see Hill, he's been running goes all day. Now they wanna get him going inside. And that was good coverage by Mixon. I'm not sure if the ball was on target if he would have caught it. Because Mixon was right on top of it. Doesn't matter because the ball was behind him, like you said. Second down and ten. Give it to Harrison right up the middle, and he'll get about four. And he stopped short of the 15-yard line. And again, another big third down play here for the Washington State Cougars. And normally Wazoo really effective offensively in the first half and they died out in the second half and that's how they've lost a lot of Pac-10 games the last three weeks. This week, little anemic in the first half and now they're able to get it going in the second half. 536 yards of offense for Washington State. Brink rolling out, looks to the end zone, got a man. Did he get it? Touchdown. Chris Jordan got the foot down, maintained possession, and the Cougs stretch the lead. Chris Jordan with a huge play, his first touchdown of the season, and what a spectacular one. Quiets the crowd in Strawberry Canyon. Brink puts it up, and oh, the left foot just inside. What a catch. What a first touchdown of the year for Chris Jordan. The guy started all last year. Only five receptions this year. He made a count on that one. 
just got the foot down. Now Langley try for point to try to make this a 39-28 Washington State lead. Pass from center was bobbled. And the Bears will pick this up. Remember, they can get points out of this if they go all the way, and they're not going to do it, but the kick is no good anyway. It remains a 10-point ball game, 38-28. to The snap from center was juggled, and that allowed Damian Hughes to knock it away. That wasn't pretty. Nonetheless, 28 unanswered points for Washington State. Remember, the Bears led it. 28 to 10. So we'll jump away. 9.52 left, and the Bears now trail the Cougars by 10. First American Fund. Wednesday at 5.30 on FSN Bay Area. 9.52 left in the ballgame, and the Bears looking up at the Cougars from 10 down, and look at the story of two halves. Halftime, the Bears went in 28 to 10. And isn't it interesting, Jeff Tedford talking to Jim Watson on the way off said, you know what, we got another half of football to play. Well, they haven't played one. Washington State on the other hand, they've gone the other way from what is their usual. Marshawn Lynch is tripped up at about the 13 yard line. He's also gonna be a little slow to get up. Brian Hall made the tackle. Lynch is okay. Threw a shoe. You gotta say, Alex Brink finishing off the first half, two interceptions, didn't look confident, didn't look good at all, and then coming back and responding in the second half, you're seeing the maturation of a young quarterback. Three touchdowns and a two-point conversion in the third quarter, and another touchdown so far in the fourth. This guy's looking great. Let's see if A.U. can mature too. A.U. only one completion in the second half. Brink, incidentally, 15 completions and five of them have been for touchdowns. A.U. under siege throws incomplete. And again, that screen, you might want to stick that in the old back pocket. The Bears have a system. They screen, they run, they throw short passes and they go for a couple home runs a game. They have something that they do. That's their system. That's what Tedford runs. But Washington State's been very good at sniffing out screens. A.E. Amu, the guy all over that one. These defensive linemen, well-trained. They recognize draw well, and they recognize screens. They've been burned by Lynch just once on the draw in the entire football game. Here's Forsett trying to find some place to go. Cuts it back against the grain and gets about three. It's going to be third and seven for the Bears. Davis and M. Christo Bruce on the tackle. Both have played very well today. It's Check out Scott Davis working against Forsett. He knows this guy's jittery. Fight Mandarino, throws him aside, and makes the play on Forsett. Forsett's got to get behind his fullback and help him out a little bit. Can't dance around and stop your feet in the backfield. Not going to gain a lot of yards that way. Another third long, and Ayub's going to have to do it, Barry. Sean Lynch is his tailback, three wideouts, the saw in the slot to the left side. He throws through behind LaBelle Hawkins, and I don't think he's going to get it. He's going to be about two yards short, and again, that's a pass that I'm sure AU would like to have back. Threw it to the wrong side. Very simply, if he leads LaBelle Hawkins on this, Cal's got a first down, maybe Hawkins is still running. Nice adjustment by Hawkins just to move his body and get in front of that ball. And now the Golden Bears are going to have to punt, give the ball back to the Cougs. Bears are now 0 for 6 in third down conversions in the second half. That's just not getting it done. Harvey will be the deep man to receive this punt of Lone. Loney kicks it short, a twisting kick. Harvey calls for a fair catch he's interfered with. And that's going to be a penalty against California and is going to give Washington State some good field position. Damian Hughes just kind of got caught up with uh, Harvey on the play because it was a short punt. Harvey not really sure of himself, throwing up the fair catch sign. Again, Bumpus. The normal punt returner for Washington State is out. On the State kick team, number 13, 15 yards, spot of the foul, first down. So the Cougs will start at the 46-yard line of the Bears. Second half for Washington State has absolutely been a symphony. 
Alex Brink has come out and he involved his playmaker, Jason Hill. They stretched the field not once, not twice, but three times, all for touchdowns. And then in the fourth quarter, getting a guy that doesn't often get involved, involved with his first touchdown catch of the year, Chris Jordan. And a nice one at that, almost a little ballet there on the sideline. Bears have already given up almost 200 yards more than their previous high. That was against UCLA. The Bruins put off 360 yards of offense. And Brick this time is crushed, and a flag comes in late. Maafala just blew in that time for the Bears. And a hold against Washington State. They'll probably just take the play and decline the penalty. I would think it's a loss of about nine yards. Might have held Maafala right when he blew right past the offensive lineman. Give a nice pose too after that. Yeah, the he did. That was good. Yeah, but you know, on you the offense number seven down three. Ten Penalties decline. Four. Second down. But a very nice rush by Maafala. There he is, number 43, right past Sean O'Connor. O'Connor tries to hold and can't, and that's where the penalty comes. And the pose. <laughs> He's trying to geek up the crowd. Somebody's got to make a play. Somebody for Cal has got to step up. They need some leadership here. Second down and 18. And now Brink has to call a timeout again as the clock was ticking down. And he got a call just in time. That's the second timeout that the Cougars have used up here in the second half. We'll take a timeout as well. 7.34 remaining to be played in the ball game. The Cougars, a 10-point lead. When you're smiling, when you're smiling. Presented by Kyocera. Now there's a whole new reason to smile. People-friendly printers and copiers, only from Kyocera. And brought to you in part by Honda, the company that defines performance in motorcycles, ATVs, personal watercraft, and scooters. And by Ruby Tuesday. Try one of our 36 famous burgers only at Ruby Tuesday. So good. Well, the Bears jumped out to a 28 to 10 lead at the half, but since then, all Cougars second and long right now. Here's Harrison, short side sweep again. Harrison with a little bit of room, cuts it back, gets to the 41 yard line, and got an awful lot of that 18 yards back. It'll be third down, about five. Don Shot O'Connor. Makes a beautiful block here, Barry. Sorry about that. Check him out. Coming on the pole, number 73, dives. Ooh, that's a tough day for the corner, Damian Hughes. Just taking it from an offensive lineman that weighs 287 pounds. And we've seen Harrison in the past. Really knows how to get up behind his linemen and get positive yardage. And you know, he gets right on their hip, gets right behind him. 23 carries, 137 yards now for Jerome Harrison. Turn the ordinary day into something special. Here's Brink, and Brink is going to try to get there for the first down. He's not going to do it. He'll be stopped at about the 38-yard line, about two yards short now. Bill Double will have to make a decision here. And Baku makes the tackle for California. I think the Cougs will go here. Jason Hill is telling his coach, pointing forward, but yep. his pleas fall on deaf ears. Yes, they do. They will punt it for the Barry and Cal Bears deep in their own territory here. Kyle Bossler to do the punting. Clock is the and they fake it. And I don't know, it's going to be close. And they're not going to make it from where they're marking the ball. They went with the short snap very much as UCLA did against California, but this time the Bears had 11 players on the field. Scott Davis was the guy who got the ball off the short snap. It was a direct snap. And he was stopped short of the first down. So the Bears catch a little break here. Now they'll have to try to capitalize. Davis just tried to sneak it, got it like a quarterback, got right up under center. I'm not sure about that. Worked for UCLA. It did, but that was a more sophisticated snapping type of thing. That was just a direct snap, quarterback sneak with a linebacker. And you're going to go up on first down, throws underneath. The catch is made by Cunningham. Pickup of about six. Uh, 
That was a big risk to fake that punt because Washington State has momentum in this football game. They have life in the fourth quarter that they haven't had all month. And to get Cal backed up, who hasn't done much on offense, would have been a better deal. Here comes a blitz. AU going up, buys time, throws, got grabbed by Cunningham. He's loose, he's gone. This will be a touchdown for California. And just like that, that fake punt comes back to bite the Washington State Cougar. Cunningham stepped out of the tackle of Alex Teams and took it all away. And you said it, Barry. Bill Doan has got to regret that decision to fake that punt because it gave Cal some life. It gave the defense some life. They came off the field celebrating. Ayub, first with a nice pass, and then to Cunningham with a touchdown. Couple missed tackles. Cal's back in business. 57 yards on the pass from Ayub to Cunningham. Now the try for point to make it a three-point ball game. It is up. It is good. And just like that, with 5.19 remaining to be played, it is a 38-35 to 35 ball game. Cunningham, just a freshman out of Fairfield, California. Ayub, only three-step drop. Gets it out there, very nice throw. Teams misses the tackle. Cunningham's off to the races. Here's the route again. Just a simple slant route, but about 10 yards down the field. Nice throw, nice catch. What can you say? Cal's back in business because of the life given to them by that failed fake punt attempt by the Coons. Cunningham really seeing his first minutes from the line of scrimmage, at least, of this season and making the most of it. He's got four catches for 91 yards and a score. Well, we said that somebody had to step up. You didn't know it was going to be a freshman. But somebody has stepped up for the Golden Bears, gotten them a score, and now they have some life on the sidelines, some excitement on the sidelines. They're back in this football game. Plenty of time remaining, 5-19. Bears first score in the second half. They've given up 28 unanswered, unanswered prior to that. Here's the kick, a side-winding kick that will go out of bounds, but into the end zone. So it'll come out to the 20-yard line. Been a great ball game for Jason Hill. He's been quiet for the last few minutes, but boy, four touchdowns and two of them coming in very quick order. Well, he's been running crazy, going all over the place, catching the ball deep, mostly just on go routes, beating Cal's corners on pure speed. Got away with a push off here and there. They tried to involve him in the last series, throwing it to him on some in routes. They just got to get him the ball. They're just playing Mixon head up on him now. Here's Brick off the play fake, in trouble, and down he goes. So the Bears get a wake-up call on defense as well. Tosh LuPoy on the sack for California. New life for the Golden Bears, and credit Brink for not throwing that football and maybe throwing an interception on the movement game. Tucks it away, protects the ball with his arm. Lives to fight another day, but now second and long. Here come the Bears. This time we bring Gibson to the near side. Jordan in the slot. Hill to the far side. Second and long. Brings straight back. Steps up. Throws incomplete in and out of the hands of Hill that time. A ball he will usually catch. And I guarantee you, Jason Hill is not afraid working on Mixon. Just drops this football. Should have been caught. Donnie McCleskey, one of the biggest hitters right there, would have tagged Hill if he made that play. Let's go down to Jim Watson, Ronnie. Uh, Barry, this is deja vu all over again. It's just like the UCLA game. They were in the same position. If they score, they win. Mike Levenseller, the offensive coordinator, was criticized for being too conservative. Well, he's made the calls. They just haven't made the plays. Brick going to go up again here. He rolls out. Going to have to throw across his body. Does. Throws deep. Nobody there. He'll cut the route off. And now the Cougs are going to have to give it back to the Bears. Bears have a lot of time to work with here. 
They do, and here's where one of the Pac-10's leading punters, Kyle Bosler, comes into play. He's going to have to hit this well, and the Cougs coverage team is going to have to get down there and get one of the nation's leading punt returners off his feet, mix it. This is a big play here on the change of possession. Bears overload the left side. Now they get out of that. And Bossler hits an end over end kick to Nixon at the 44, right back up the gut into Cougar territory at the 45 yard line. Good return by Nixon off a relatively short punt, a 46 yard punt and a nine yard return. And the Bears in business in Cougar territory. Next week, college football coming back. The ninth-ranked UCLA Bruins will try to keep pace atop the Pac-10 conference standings. They'll take on Stanford, and Stanford, already a winner over Arizona State today, will try to pull off another upset. We begin with our kickoff show at 6 o'clock Eastern, 3 Pacific. Next week, we'll be down on the farm. I love it there. Bring my goats. I haven't been there in a couple of years. It's been a while. First down right at the 45-yard line. Marshawn Lynch right up the gut. That's about three, and again, he ran out of a shoe. That's the second time he's done it. Maybe his foot shrinking. Not sure that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that happens sometimes, especially on the field turf. That field turf grabs your shoe and it comes off. It's hard because you never can tie it quite like you could in the locker room, and you keep tying it out there on the field, and you don't tie it fast enough. Keeps coming off. And a four, second, and six for the Bears. Cougs jumping into the gaps here. Here they come. Everybody coming. Ayub steps up, throws, Kyle has it at the 20 yard line. Don Turner defending, but nice route and an excellent throw by Ayub, who was under siege. We kept saying, when is Ayub going to step up, start leading this football team? He started doing it right now. Got a nice block from Marshawn Lynch, picking up the blitz, and throws a strike to Cunningham, who's been catching the ball very well. Working on Don Turner that time on the slant. Laurel Cunningham now over 100 yards in pass receptions. Five catches for 112 yards. Ball right at the 20, first down. Lynch left side. Gets it to the 15, down to the 13-yard line. Gain of seven. Three minutes remaining in the ball game. Really nice push that time by the left side of the Cal offensive line. Moving the Cougs back. And Lynch knows how to get right behind those guys and get positive yardage. Very nice play on first down by the Golden Bears. The momentum in this game has officially swung back to the home team. No question about it. It started with that fake punt. Lynch now 24 carries. 156 yards in the score. A.U. gives it to Lynch. Lynch will have the first down inside the 10-yard line. Braidwood on the stop, but not before Marshawn Lynch picks up another first down. The first down and goal right at the nine-yard line for the Bears with 2.17 remaining in the game. And the hometown crowd really coming to life, appreciating what this young and beat-up football team is showing them. They could have given up. Jason Hill was stretching the field. Alex Brink looked like a superstar. Even Jerome Harrison, who hasn't had the greatest of days, was really going on all cylinders for Washington State. And they had a pass rush. Cal's taking that shot. They're coming back. And AU's going to call a timeout here. This will be the second timeout that the Bears have called. So each team with just one timeout remaining. A minute and 54 seconds left in the ball game. So both teams will come over, talk it over with their coaches. Bears first down, the ball at the nine yard line. They trail by three. And for the Bears, they don't have to get too fancy. They don't have to throw a bubble screen or an inside screen. They don't have to throw a fade to one of these inexperienced receivers. All they have to do is get the ball to Marshawn Lynch. If not Lynch, get the ball to Forsett. Run the football, take some time off the clock, and score. If you're Washington State, you have to stout up on the inside. You need a big play from M. Christo Bruce. You need something from Bill Dine. You need one of the
one of these guys in your front seven to step up, make a big play, maybe even force a turnover. But the whole game is right now with a minute 54 left and the ball inside the 10. God, I love the Pac-10 shootout. How about the performance of Laurel Cunningham? As we said, this guy has been an observer the whole season. Has come up big. And that's the beauty of college football. You know, there's a lot of guys sitting on the bench, freshmen, young guys, maybe older guys that haven't played a lot in their career. People go down, people get hurt. Somebody's got to pick up that torch and carry it. Cunningham's done it today so far. Really has. Hey, you've got to throw. Looks the end zone. Got a man. Touchdown, Hawkins. So much for running it. So much for using the clock. <laughs> Joe A.U. goes to his old teammate from San Francisco City College, LaBelle Hawkins. I believe that's his first touchdown of the year. Four touchdown passes in the ballgame for Joe A.U., but he started the second half really slow. He's one of his first seven in the second half. Hawkins now eight catches, 71 yards, and as you said, his first career touchdown. Try for Point Schneider to try to make this a four-point lead, and he does. And the Cougars will have a minute and 50 seconds, which in this game is a world of time. But one thing to remember, they only have one timeout. And that could not have come at a better time for Lavelle Hawkins. The only thing I would have done differently if I was him, I would have caught that ball and hugged Oski the Bear. <laughs> I know. I mean, it's that sweater. I'm telling you, it's gamey. It's 65 years old. <laughs> I don't care that Oski looks old. He's a star. Take a look at the Kiyosara plays of the game, and they were the last two scores of the California Golden Bears. Cunningham on this one for 54 yards. Shook a tackle, took it all away. And then deep end zone. Hawkins off a bullet from his old junior college quarterback, Joe Ayu. How do you leave Austin game? <laughs> Wrong. Criminal almost. Hug Austin. Show him some love. And can the Coops come back now, Barry? They've had trouble in the fourth quarter all year. It's still haunting them on the road here at Cal. Loney, high driving kick. Gibson runs up, takes it on the goal line. Straight back up the middle, and Gibson is going to be dropped at about the 17 yard line. There has been some hit going on on special teams. One of the Bears slow to get up here. Zach Follett was the man who made the tackle. Well, there's been 1,100 yards of offense in this game. <laughs> That's why you gotta love the back end. Look at that. Woo. Washington State's got the edge by 10, 559 to 549. And the Cougs definitely, Barry, have the weapons to get this ball down the field in a hurry. Can Brink get it to him? You got Hill. Bumpus is out, but you got Harrison. George made a play this evening. Gotta have a touchdown, though. Field goal, no good. 42-38, 145 left. Brink straight back, three-man rush. Brink steps up, throws too tall. Intended for Jordan, who got a hand on it. Had he not have gotten a hand on it, Thomas DeCou might have. And Jordan was running relatively free through the middle of the Cal secondary. If that ball was on the money, that's a pretty nice start for Washington State trying to win this football game. First down line brought to you by Overstock.com. Save up to 70% every day. It's all about the O. Second down now. And a pitch this time to Harrison. Harrison looking for room, got a little bit of room. He's going to get about seven, maybe eight yards. Clock will keep rolling, 130. And now they're going to have to hurry here. They have only one timeout left, so they got to get to the line of scrimmage and get a playoff. The 123. Coops really tried to catch the Cal Bears off, off guard there and, and run a little pitch, try to get to the sideline. Problem is, Harrison couldn't get the ball out of bounds. Trying to make one extra. Now coming out of 108, 107, 106. They've used up a lot of time here. Straight back Brink. Brink throwing downfield, and Jordan makes the catch out of bounds for a first down at the 45-yard line. 
He could have had it underneath, and he went for a little bit more. And Jordan with a nice grab and a good throw by Brink. Very nice play by Brink, looking off, checking out Harrison. He had him open in the flat. And then he goes for more, just like you said, gets it downfield. Jordan had to wait for it a little bit. Took a bit of a shot, but a nice play by the quarterback and wide receiver and the offensive line for protected Brink. First down at the 45, pitch to Harrison again. Harrison's got room. He's got a first down and more to the 40-yard line. And you know what else looms big now, too? Remember that bad snap on the extra point? Botched extra point, or they'd be looking at just a field goal to tie. I didn't remember that. There you are. Very nice. Dick Quinn. We do it. First down at the 40-yard line. Blitz comes. Break with time. Looking deep. Looking for Hill. Jump ball and knocked away. And Hill got himself one-on-one -on -one with Damian Hughes, who he's owned all day long. Him and Hughes have been going at it. You see Hughes with a little celebration after this one. Hughes in great position. Hill trying to get up for the ball. Maybe a touch overthrown. You know, it's hard to remember all the scores and extra points and touchdowns in these Pac-10 shootout games. Well, this has been, what, nine touchdown passes from these two quarterbacks. Now 39 seconds, second and 10. Break straight back. Has to roll away for pressure and throws under siege. I think they're going to say he's down by contact. And that means the clock will keep ticking. So now what the Cougars have to do is get right back to the line of scrimmage while they will burn their last time out here. Fourth sack by the Bears. Well called, I thought, by the officials. And that's number 99. You see him coming off the edge. Philip Baku does it to Bobby Bird, takes an inside route, gets right at the legs of Brink. Brink throws that ball from his belly. I'm not sure if I've ever seen that before. No question, that was a sack. Nice play by Baku. Cooper Tire, defensive player of the game, is Greg Van Hoosen. Remember that interception and returned 16 yards for a touchdown and kind of changed things in California's favor near the end of the first half. They had two picks, turned into two scores, and gave them a 28 to 10 halftime lead. Now it's third down and 18. Cougars are out of timeouts. Washington State has got to be patient. They only have two downs to get 18 yards. They don't have to get all 18 on the very first throw. Get 10 yards, throw it underneath, then get back up to the line of scrimmage, get the first down, then worry about scoring. They have to get a first down before they worry about scoring the football. 30 seconds, not a lot of time, but enough to get a first down. There's in the infamous prevent defense. Brink straight back, runs out of time. Now he has to bail out of there. Throws underneath, it's caught by Benjamin and out of bounds with 22 seconds left, but 11 yards short of the first down. So now it's gonna be fourth down and they need 11. And that's okay, that was a nice play by Brink. Felt the pressure. The Golden Bears doing a great job getting some defensive pressure with only a four-man rush. Ted for trying to pump up the crowd here. Brink just involving his tight end, getting some of that yardage back. Now he's got a chance to get the first. Here's the game, though. Fourth down and 11. Brink will go out of the gun. Straight back with time. Now he runs out of time. He's in trouble. He just shovels it off. It's caught, but it's not going to matter. The Bears are going to win this one with 15 ticks left. They will take over. They fell behind after leading at halftime, 28 to 10. 28 unanswered points by the Cougars. But in the end, the Cougars having the same result as they've had the last two weeks. It's been very disappointing in the final period for Bill Doba and his team. You begin to think that the Cougars want to go into the fourth quarter losing a football game. Let's talk for a moment about today's Pontiac Pac-10 game-changing performance. Pontiac will award the school with today's Pontiac Pac-10 game-changing performance, $1,000 to their general scholarship fund. Two touchdowns, 
down the stretch for the Cal Bears. They take a knee, and this one will be in the books for the Cal Bears, and they'll go into a bye week off a win, and it was a desperately needed win. And I, I don't think I've ever seen Jeff Tedford as emotional as that. No, you got to give the credit to Joe Ayub. He's taken a lot of heat. He's been through a lot. He's still maybe not the guy that they need to lead this football team, but he's doing a great job with what he's got, leading a bunch of freshman receivers. Tedford was leading cheers. And look at this. I mean, I know this guy really well. He is not an animated guy. But I think he really thinks his team showed a lot of guts here. I think they did. A lot of young players, a lot of hurt guys, a lot of people not playing in the football game. The Bain, the defensive lineman, wasn't supposed to play, played a little bit. We didn't see him in the second half. The Cal Bears played hard and earned a victory at home against a really high-flying Cougar offense. Now they get a bye week and a chance to mend a little bit before getting back into Pac-10 conference play, but this was a win that was really sorely needed for both these teams, and the Bears come away with it. They win it 42-38. That is a wrap for us, for my partners, Petros Papadakis and Jimmy Watson. I'm Barry Tompkins. So long, everybody. We'll see you next week at Stanford.